Hello all of my mischief makers, Charles Lorita here of the band Charles Lorita and the Mischief and the owner of Mischief Studios in Pennington, New Jersey. I'm coming to you from the Rat Cave to tell you you're watching Guitar Tales with Dave Cohen. Dave, do what you do best and take it away my friend. And welcome to another edition of Guitar Tales. My name is Dave Cohen. And as we do at the beginning of every show, uh, we want to thank our great sponsor, Charles Larita of Mischief Studios. And that bumper he did was absolutely great um, on, a, on a few levels, really. Uh, my favorite part of it is his music. Uh, we had him on season one, probably the third or fourth episode. Uh, he played a little guitar for us. I loved his attitude about music. Uh, he was the opposite of Ivory Tower when it came to the instruments he plays. He loves the music. He loves any kind of instrument. And that's a gentleman who could take any guitar and make it sound amazing. And, and since we've been together, uh, Charles has done something extraordinary. He's released some fantastic music. Uh, but perhaps more importantly for our listeners and our viewers, he opened up a three-dimensional, I would call it a guitar community, really, it's a studio in Pennington, New Jersey, and you can use it to buy a guitar. You can use it to record music. You can use it to connect with other musicians. Your guitar breaks. Get it fixed over there. Uh, you need to connect with other musicians. Get that done. If you want to record that great song you and your band just wrote, go do it there. If you want to practice, do it there. Over at Mr. Studios, it's really great stuff. And as we also do every week, I want to thank my dear friend of, I think, about 40 years or so, uh, Scott Guitar Assist Engel, we get to stare at him during the show. He's in black and white. We're in color because we're cooler than he is. Uh, but he does all the magic behind the scenes and very frequently in front of the scenes, including something we'll be um, setting up in the very near future where Scott and I will be doing some mini shows uh, in between the more customary shows that you've been watching for four straight years now. And also keep your eyes open. We're going to have some merch. We'll have some Guitar Tales merch coming up probably in the near future. Now, for tonight's show, this is a really, really special show, and it's an important show. Uh, we brought back one of our favorite guests in Guitar Tales history. Um, we could probably show you a screenshot of the last time Tom Janeron was on the show. And we had a panel discussion, which is one of the most popular shows we've done, about the ins and outs of running a band, about musical venues and the like. And, and here's what Tom brings to the table and why we asked him to come back today. Uh, he's the most interesting man in the room, literally. So he is a gifted drummer. He is a musical venue owner. He is a musical venue manager. He is an accomplished attorney, uh, and he's an overall great guy. So what we brought Tom here to talk about is something called the law of the band. And you'll see for the second time in the history of the show, I actually put on a blazer. You'll see Tom in a suit. Um, and we're going to talk about the law as it relates to the formation, continuation, preservation, success, and happiness of a band. So, Tom, thank you so much for joining us. What's going on, Dave? Good to be uh, back, man. It is great to see you. I see you all the time socially. I love seeing you in a tie, all professional, like we both periodically act. Don't get used to it. I know. I know. <laughs> and, and a lot of people don't know it. I'm an attorney, too. Uh, but I do not do what you do, and I don't know enough about what you do. So I'm about to get very enlightened. So thank you. Uh, listen, you know what? It's, I, you know, like you said in the intro, it, I think more, uh, more importantly than anything is that this is the kind of stuff that all the musicians and bands really need to know. Yeah. It's, uh, there's the fun side, there's the artistic side, and then there's the business side. And it's... that is, the, that's the part that, that I would like to dig into and to help these people. I mean, you know, you know, Dave, look, you know, Scott knows these people are our families. Yeah, they absolutely. Have, they have a special place in our hearts. And, you know, being in a band or being an artist, if you plan to make money, it's a business, period. That's what it is. 
and it must must be treated that way. Musicians have long, you know, treated this uh, this thing called music as as a hobby and as art, and and it, and it is right, right, it right. Is, it is, and it should be. And but the sad reality is, when you want to make a career of it, is when you need to put together certain uh, formations. And sadly, the mistakes that these musicians make when they're first starting out when they're the youngest, when they're most impressionable, when they know the least, are the mistakes that can quite often come back and haunt them. Right. And they could end up, you know, I mean, imagine this. You, you, you finally achieve your dream. You're, you're there. You get to where you want to be, wherever that is in your career. And all of a sudden you realize, I'm making everyone else money. I'm not making myself any money. I mean, that's the saddest reality is that you actually achieve your dream and you've ruined your dream because you didn't you didn't do things right. You know, it's like building a dream home and you just no foundation. the foundation. Yep. That you know what it's like, do you want to become the next VH1 behind the music story? You know? Exactly. Yeah. You're and, you're gonna you're gonna end up you're gonna end up on TV, but it's gonna be for the wrong reasons. Right. And and it's funny, you know, my dad is a retired engineer. They're all horrible business people, brilliant <laughs> minds, horrible business people. Um, he had a business many years ago. Great idea. It didn't take off because th their brains don't work there. And that's why we're so appreciative to have you come in. I, I, I can't even imagine anywhere anyone who is better suited than you to give the advice we're about to talk about because of the multiple hats you wear. You're in a working band. You're with Scott and the Smoking Jackets. You own clubs. You manage clubs. And you have a vibrant, active law practice. We started... I mean, we started tonight's show a couple of minutes late. You took a legal call uh, <laughs> because you're always working. So the, the very the many hats you wear, I think, put you in a position where you're poised better than anyone I could think of to sort of meld all of these different issues under the legal backdrop where you're you're thinking about the people you're trying to help. Well, I've been you know, I've been involved in this business since I was very young. You know, I DJed my eighth grade dance, and that's kind of where it started. I've always been drawn to towards the artistic uh, community. And, you know, as an, as an artist, when I was young, uh, not, not musician artist, but as an illustrator artist and, and different things uh, in that realm. And, and, you know, and we can talk about left versus left brain versus right brain. And that's true. A lot, yeah. A lot of people say, you know, left brain people aren't really the business people, but I'm just saying that's not an excuse. I mean, right. I, I probably lean left brain because I tend to get along with more left brain type people than right brain type people. Right, but right, I right. I forced myself uh, through school and then to law school, which wasn't even in my plans. So I've had to force myself and then owning three bars, big places. You, you, they don't care about your creativity. This is about numbers and yeah, taxes. This, yeah, taxes. All this crazy stuff, which yeah, yeah that's right. today's the twentieth. I'm a couple days late, but we'll get there. Uh, <laughs> do as I say, not as I do, Dave. That's uh, right. That's why I, I farm that out. I have an accountant for that reason. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do. He's been yelling at me for two days. <laughs> yeah, it, it's funny. It, it, it's scary yeah. stuff. So I think you gave us. Um, you put so much work into this, and I could see it. Um, you you put all of your thoughts together, and I I. I I read it, I, I think you put it together for us last week, an outline of a, a really ambitious set of issues. We'll see how much we can cover uh, throughout the show and we'll turn it into two shows if we need to. Uh, but I love all the thought you put together so that people don't find themselves artistically com and commercially successful and yet unsuccessful in terms of making it all come together and work. So yeah, it, it's... It, you know, it, it's about, you know, what, what I, you know, what I tried to put together, you know, for you is almost like the, 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 the building blocks. It's, yeah. I don't know that there, I mean, I've read a lot of books over the years about uh, entertainment and uh, entertainment law, of course. And I've been at some, I was at a wonderful three day seminar at Harvard university about entertainment law years ago, but really what no, I've never seen it. And I'm, hopefully it exists somewhere, something like what we're talking about where it's kind of a bare bones structure, how to set up the band. All these other books are about publishing and copyright and all those, which which are very important and important parts of this. But I think this stuff comes first. Uh, yeah, it's it's clear to me it does. 
And, and perhaps let's just jump right into it. I, sure. You know, you've got, uh, I'll, I'll give you the preview. I'll give not you, but everyone else the preview. We have five things we'll, we're going to work through today. We have setting up the business entity, written band operating agreement. That's so important. So band cool. equipment. Who would think of that, that that's a legal issue? But it is. Insurance. We all know it, but sometimes we think of it too late. And then the do's and don'ts about getting employment for your band. This is, it, it's so nuts and boltsy, but in a band, you know, you're thinking about how cool is this song? Is the bass too loud? You know, where are we going to play it? But these are the fundamentals. So let's start with the first place you started on your outline is setting up a business entity. Tell us what that's about. Okay. And, and you know, and speak, and, and, and if I back up for one second for you, sure. The, the, the reality is, it's really two things. It's the business entity, which we're diving into right now. Right. And it's the operating agreement of that business entity. So the reality is, it's a really one thing. It's that business entity and how it's set up because the insurance, the equipment, uh, that's all part and parcel of that. Like you said, that all important agreement of how everything's going to come together, rights, and responsibilities of everybody and um, what's your future? Like, what do you want to do? Who's in charge? So, right. That, so, uh, setting up business entity. Uh, these things should should always be done consulting an attorney and an accountant. Uh, you, know, I know what I know, and I know what I don't know. And, exactly. Right. Uh, and, and and I always say, contact your accountant. I say it so many times. Like, well, why can't I talk to you about it? I say because they're like, well, you know about this stuff. Yeah, maybe I do, but I'd rather you talk to a professional that's going to know yep. your ins and outs. It, you know, uh, because each with each entity has different things. I mean, of course, you know, there's different business entities. So let's let, let's back. So you, you got a ban, and you know, for for argument's sake, let, let's for the purpose of this discussion, Dave. Yeah. Let, let's say we're talking about a band of uh, of four individuals. Okay. Perfect. Right. And it doesn't make a difference. This and it, and and the beauty of this, it doesn't make a difference whether. They're doing covers. It doesn't make a difference if they're doing originals. It's it, it, all of these things uh, 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 are, are for everybody. It's for everybody. So right. music format doesn't matter. Nothing matters other than these people are getting together and they're going to make, create, write whatever music. All right. So the four individuals get together and after this, they're gonna they're gonna have to say, well, how do we want to operate this? This is a business. Right. How, is, how is our business going to operate? So it could be, well, it's not going to be a sole proprietorship because there's more, more than, than one of them. Exactly. So it, is it a partnership? Well, here's what happens. And what people don't understand is that if you don't choose an entity, the law views this as a partnership. And that means it can flow through if there's a problem to people's bank accounts. Well, it, it, well yes. But also what happens is then, there, it's called the Uniform Partnership Act. Okay. And, and the Uniform Partnership Act is the law that governs partnerships. So if four people get together and they're they're operating as a band and a dispute happens, they look at each other and they don't know they don't know what to do. Well, you know what? In absence of a written agreement, the Uniform Partnership Act is going to tell them the answer. And that may not be the answer they intended when they put the band together. They might all be unhappy with it. Because very often, yeah. I, very often, if not most of the times, you know, the all band members aren't created equal. Very often, there's a person who put it together. That right. could be the songwriter, could be the singer. Uh, you, you know, there could be one or two people that are more or less just gig musicians that come in and out. Uh, so how all these things, it, it may not, everything may not be four ways. And of course, when you have four ways, you, you have issues with, with, with uh, ties and whatnot. But right. We can get to that in a minute. So then the other, what's the other choice? You have corporations, C-Corps, which you, you would never do, or an S-Corp, which is a, 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 a subchapter S under a C-Corp. Right. Those corporations for, for most businesses, unless an accountant has a good reason why, are antiquated because of double taxation. Okay. You, you get When you make the money, you get paid corporate tax, and then you take the money out of that bank account for each band member, you're paying tax on top wow. of it. So is that why the LLC is kind of popular these days? Absolutely. And that right. brings us to the LLC, okay. which is the one. Uh, I had the uh, privilege of going to law school in Delaware, which is the corporate, you know, the corporate oh my God. of America. 
Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I was learning about LLCs before they were even really popular in New Jersey. I remember I was in law school. I'm like, what? Like, I almost thought they weren't telling the truth. I'm like, why would anyone choose any other business entity? Right. So I'm going to, so, so we're going to take this the next step and say, what's going to happen is a band's going to set up an LLC. Okay. And what that LLC does, uh, we can talk more about the taxes later, but it's not a corporation. So the way people will pay taxes on that, it's, it's kind of like a partnership, but you have the corporate, uh, you have uh, uh, corporate insulation from, from liability, uh, assuming a number of things are, are done properly. And, and the way you pay your, the way you pay taxes is through it's passed through. So each person pays their own individual taxes, which means if you make more money than I do, maybe you're paying more taxes than I am. Uh, and it all depends on how everything's set up, whether you're paying self-employment tax, which is typically you'd be doing uh, for, for these situations at whatever rate uh, right. has your own thing. So the most important thing in the LLC, once you're set up, which these things can be set up uh, online. Right, they're simple, yeah. yeah. And, and, if you, and if you don't wanna take a stab at it yourself, which is understandable. There's, there's, you know, the services to do it for you. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times I suggest, I, I mean, I typically don't do it for people because it's not worth your time to do it. It's kind of, yeah, I don't want to say that. I don't want to sound, sound like that, it, it, but it's really not, I don't want to charge a person for, for the time it takes. And I think it's important that a person learns about it because every year you, you're going to, you're going to renew that. Yes. And every year you're going to go to the same webpage. You're going to renew it in the same place you set it up. Uh, you could use a legal Zoom or something like that. Just make sure that they're going to try to milk you a la carte for every last little thing. I, I, um, I did it when I started my law firm. Not legal right, Zoom, but I went online and learned it. And it's pretty intuitive. Yeah. It, yeah. And then and yeah. one good thing about legal Zoom is that, like you say, it's intuitive. You don't need it again. Right. Uh, but once you set up uh, that entity and... Um, well, actually, you, you know, so you decide you're going to use an LLC, right? Okay. And you're going to set up the entity. That kind of brings you to uh, your the, the entity. You're going to need a trading name. So the trading name very often would be the band name. Like, or it could be like I was thinking of a cool band name, which would be like Tom Janeron and the Engels. No, listen, <laughs> no one spell that one right. <laughs> Engel would have, would have the E and the L backwards. I still can't. <laughs> and Janeron would have like three E's in it. It is it will never work. <laughs> you know, I, I you know a band name. Maybe we can call them the Crazy Daves. I don't know. There maybe. we go. I'll take that one. <laughs> <laughs> has a has a better flair to it. It does. So, and and again, a trademark search is another thing. Uh, so you're setting up the band. You say, all right, it's going to be an LLC. You're going to set up the LLC. One of the things they're going to ask, the questions they're going to ask, is uh, the trade name uh, of the of the company. So the trade name is you, you know you use the band's name and you trademark it, which is one thing that so many people don't do. Trademark searches can be done very in a, in a very sophisticated way through using attorneys and crazy searches. Right. Or I suggest you start with a very simple thing. Google you, it. See if a URL is available and you Google it. Yeah. It's, it's, very, it's very, very simple. Uh, and you can, go, you can go to a trademark page and you can, actually, you can do a trademark yourself or again, the services that do that for you. Uh, keep in mind, if you have a band name, uh, just because the name is taken doesn't mean you can't use it. Uh, what context is the band, is the name being used for? If it's another band, that's one thing. Right. And certain things you just can't trademark because they're so generic. But, you know, that's another another whole hour uh, show. Right. Is, uh, trademarking and what's generic, what's not. But it's one of the things you should be aware of and, and you should trademark a name. And that's and that's kind of this uh, LLC and the trademark really leads to the first issue. You're going to, have to start asking some really hard questions. You've got these four guys together, or four girls together, or a mixture thereof, and right. the question is who owns what? Yeah, you know, yeah. So and who the owns egos. A band who who owns a band name? And yeah. if you know the four people that start a band may not be the four people that make money in the band. It, you right. know, it could it could be many things that switch off. That's why if it's an individual that's putting, up, putting together a band, he or she may want the LLC to be in their name alone, and then they're going to use other musicians as right. as work for higher musicians, uh, which is something which something else we'll get into. Right. So, let me, I, I just I want to jump in 
because I want everyone to understand how important what you're talking about is right now. Give us some examples of what bad things can happen if, if we we're covering two related things, setting up your entity and, you know, we're, we're going to lead into the band agreement soon. Give us a couple of nightmare scenarios so people understand this is not like a serving suggestion on a cereal box. This is really important stuff. Well, it's, it's, it's very simple. Okay. Uh, I mean, a, a, a real life example that leaps to mind was uh, years ago, there was a, a very successful and great band called Bums in a Park. Okay. And uh, Jim Monahan from WNEW was part of the band. They were called Jim Monahan's uh, Bums in a Park. And they got into a dispute with Jim Monahan. He ended up leaving the band, but he, he, he owned the band's name or owned part of the band's name. And, and I was involved in the legal end. I was a teenager. Right. Not teenagers, but I was very young. Uh, but at the end of the day, they had to stop using their name because they didn't have con full control of the name. There you go. But it really is. It really is that simple to where uh, if you don't own the name, you can't use it. I mean, in a different context, you know, where a record label owns your name. Right. And that's that goes to the whole Prince debacle of where when Prince signed one of his deals, he, he gave up all of his intellectual property rights or, or, or enough of them that he gave up his name. That's why he released that album under a symbol. I did he, not know that. Yes, he did. Whatever that album was, uh, it, 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 it's just a symbol. I remember the symbol. I didn't know the reason, though. That's interesting. Yeah, well, and that's why also they, he was, remember for a while, he was being called as the artist, the artist formerly known yes. as Yes. Yeah, I so that was a whole contract. <laughs> wow, yeah, and well, it's he, funny. He spun it so brilliantly to the press that you know we, uh, I just as a fan, I just assumed he was being an artist, and he was. But yeah, he was being an artist. He didn't protect himself, and he had to pay for it. Yeah, but you know, but listen, not many people can pull, pull that kind of stuff off. Yeah, but, you know, at the end of the day, you need to be in control of, uh, you know, of your band name, and if you're not sure. Who's going to be a band and who's not? That's fine. And you know what? And, and I think at the beginning is a great time to have that discussion. Uh, right. You know, per, potential hurt feelings aside, it, it, there's no money on the table at this point. So people are giving up things and negotiating things without having to let go of any money. Right. So, so if the person who brought everyone together says, hey, look, I this is the band name I came up with and I want this. And I, I'm going to keep this. You guys want to be in a band. You know, I'll split money with you and I'll do this with you, but it's my band name. I came up with it. And most people are going to say, yeah, okay, that's fair. Right. But that's why these conversations have to have now, not once money's being thrown around. And, and I wonder if they're in, in Tom Janeron's office, you're probably sort of informally serving the role as, uh, of mediator saying, well, that makes sense. You know, and, and the other band, and this is how it's normally done. If, you know, if, if Sally came up with the band name, obviously she's going to own it. You know, like when you're talking to all the members of the band, I would imagine you could be the moderating force if, if some eagle, if some feathers get ruffled, you know, this is the way we do it, yeah. you know. Well, that, you're, you're exactly right. In fact, even more pointed, when, yeah. I, when, I, when I meet with band members, I tell them I am not any of your attorney. Right. I'm not acting as your attorney because when it comes to executing a band member agreement, which is an LLC operating agreement, you can call it a band member agreement, but it's actually, it's the operating agreement of the LLC. Right. How are you operating this LLC? Well, this, op this LLC is a, a company. This company is a band. So it's a, it's a band, it's a band agreement. You can call it a band partnership agreement, band operating agreement, whatever you want. But I tell these guys, Hey, look, I can't, I'm not representing any of you individually because you there's you guys are kind of against each other. It would be a conflict yeah. of interest to you know, represent yep. one and not the other. So what I'm doing is I'm going to sit down and I'm going to actually put the questions out there that you guys have to come up with the answers to. So you're right. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mediator and a consultant really right. more so than, uh, than anyone. I'll answer any, any other questions, but I'm right. not going to sit down and write, that ag that agreement for them because if the singer says, well, look, you know, I really don't want the the drummer to have this or have that. 
uh, I'm sitting down with all with all four of them, and I can't. Right. And, and and it's so easy because you could just say, "Look, I have a fiduciary duty to this great band, the Crazy Daves, um, as a whole." And, and and just like I suppose in any area of law, if, if there's money at that point and it's involved, you can say, "Well, you guys can each lawyer up," but I only care about you guys and you you gals as a whole. Yeah. And that puts you in a great situation because you you're never in a position where you you know even if one person came to you and you've been dealing with one person, your ethical and fiduciary duty, once you're hired by the band, it doesn't matter who your main contact person is, and that allows you to protect everyone, and it really, it could pull them together, which is great. Well, I do. I, what, what I'll do is once they've either have a lawyer or they've fi- signed, you know, super ass-covering releases that, uh, you know, they're not going to come after me, right. maybe any type of conflict of interest, well, then I'm representing... Uh, you know, Guitar Tales LLC trading is the crazy days. Right, right. And so that, that that's my client. My client and my duty is to, uh, my duty of, of loyalty and everything is to the collective. To the right, band. right, right, right. Which is a great position to be in. Yes. And, and, and I suppose, you know, it, it, if we take a tiny side little rabbit trail here, but I don't even know if it's a rabbit trail. So most bands, when they start, have very little or no money, at least coming from the band. Maybe they have it coming from other sources. And from what we just described, your role just strikes me as so helpful and important. And it could, people could do a lot on their own, but I would imagine if they can afford it, it behooves these new band members to at least get a consult with an attorney, even if they don't do everything through the attorney. Well, you know what, what I would do, what I would do, Dave, is because, you know, I legitimately care about th- these artists. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would, I would just charge them, uh, you know, a hundred dollars a person oh, and I would great. sit down with them. I would sit down with them and their parents. I, I didn't care who it was. We'd sit down at a conference table and I'd say, look, you've got, a, you've got an hour of my time. Of course, if it was an hour and a half, I don't, I'm, I certainly wasn't watching the clock. Right. And, right. And so that would be a start. And you know, and you want to talk about start. So you got like a, if it's a hundred dollars for a consult, and then if it's like two hundred and fifty to set up the LLC, uh, it, you know, then then the next thing you set up the LLC, you do your trademark search, you register uh, uh, register a trademark, and you could do that cheap. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just registered a trademark for uh, Eddie Trunk and Florentine and Don Jameson's new show, and okay. uh, that rocks. And it's like one hundred twenty five dollars in fees. I mean, as long as you, I mean, the attorneys, of course, can make it a lot more expensive, but that's not, that's, that's not very expensive. Then you're getting an EIN, which is a social security number for the band. It's a phone call. If that's how you want to do it it, or a quick. Well, you, when you're setting up your LLC, you can just go to the next page and you can set up your EIN, which is your tax identification number for the crazy Daves. Right. And, and now the trademark can get more expensive if you're, if you're going to do more than a name, if there's a logo or a photo right. or a catchphrase, things, you know, trademark wise can become much, uh, much more complicated, but the EAN is easy. You open up a bank account, which, uh, you know, you need a you know, hundred bucks or whatever to open a bank account. So really pretty inexpensively, you can be sitting there at the right. rehearsal studio with an LLC, a trade name, a bank account, a tax ID number, and the, uh, the, the operating agreement, of course, once that's finished, that doesn't necessarily cost money unless there, there's legal involved. But you can be off to the races with, without a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like under twenty five hundred bucks just to at least get started. Maybe under fifteen hundred. Sure. And, and and what you've done, and to me, you you've eliminated a whole host of problems. Obviously, life brings problems. Like there's car accidents. There's health and things like that. But this is like, these are problems that you could just head off at the pass. And and as I'm listening, and and really for the first time as a lawyer talking to another lawyer about these issues, just just the consult, especially something that inexpensive, because then that gives you your marching orders as to how to protect the collective, as you called it. Everyone who's in Tom's office now has their marching order. You're going to go do it. You'll do a, a Google search see if we think it makes sense to try to get a trade name. Do we have to tweak our name a little bit? You know, you 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 set up, go online, set up a bank account. 
you get an EIN number, you know. I I actually love reading their faces because yeah. I'm hitting them with like, and I have a detailed list of things. I and I and I'm hitting them with questions, right? I never thought of. And again, let's say the four of them, <laughs> they're sitting there, and as I'm saying these things, you can sometimes see the eyeballs darting back and forth. Oh, like, I love it. Not, it, and I, when I talk about voting rights, you know, because oh, everyone yeah. have an equal say, you know, which is part, which again, the, these things are everything we're talking about right now is actually part of, of the operating agreement. And, you know, voting rights, you start talking about, you know, are you guys all going to have equal say? What about time? And and that, the eyeballs start back and forth. And then sometimes you can almost feel like yeah. not, not have much uh, say is. But Dave, what's important too is with this is that to make a decision, whether your LLC is, are all are all again, we're talking about four people. Are, right. Is everyone a member of the Crazy Daves, right. or are there two members of the Crazy Daves, or one member of the Crazy Daves, and then the other three people? Uh, well, what what happens is they want to hire. What, what bands typically will do is they'll say, "There's two. Let's say there's two owners, right? Right, and." You Glenn know, Fry Dave and uh, what's his Dave. name? Scott right? and Dave own the Crazy Daves. Yeah, all right. and, we'll, yeah, let's stick with that one. Yeah, and, and the other two people right. are you're going to call them independent contractors. Yeah, right. right. But, and and the reason why you want to do that is because if they don't, they're they're employees, and now with employees, you're adding another whole layer of business. FICA, right? workers comp, workers comp. Yeah, payroll taxes. You're talking about. Paying, you know, federal, you know, you're paying that FICA guy and 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 local taxes and you know the, the, the state, all that other stuff. And that becomes an issue. And that's actually an ongoing issue in New Jersey right now, because in New Jersey, they default to an employee and they've gone after a number of bands. Uh, really? Anyone that's in a band that's watching this knows somebody. It's been through it. And a lot of the bands have been around for a long time. The Department of Labor comes after them and says, whoa, whoa, whoa. These aren't these aren't uh, uh, work for hires. These are employees. Uh, and that is uh, and that's a big deal. That's yeah, not- I hadn't thought of that. And I wonder if if you have someone and, you know, my work, I, I, I did personal injury work for about eight or nine years. Now I do all malpractice, but I know a, a little bit about this. And when you talk about workers' comp, very frequently you'll see these law disputes where someone, every single thing about them just reeks of this is an employee, but the employer might say, no, they're not. You know, they're, they're, they're a four higher 1099. And and I would think in that scenario, I, I, I know I, as a lawyer, for what I do, I wouldn't have the sophistication to figure out how to navigate that so that I'm properly calling someone a 1099 instead of an employee. Yeah. Uh, it, it's tough. The <clears throat> With the IRS, they have, and I'm guessing it's still the same. I haven't dealt with this issue in a, in a, since before COVID. Yeah. What constitutes an independent contractor uh, the IRS uh, at least was calling it the uh, 20 factor test. Okay. And what they do is they evaluate the workers to determine whether they think it's an independent tra- contractor or an employee. Uh, so it's always important in, in the, in the, in the band membership agreement that if you put people in there, uh, if you say you're going to be, uh, you don't say you're going to be hiring people. You want to say that you're using this one or using that one. Yeah. And employee. And in any agreement you have with the musician, uh, aside from making sure that they don't uh, or don't become part of the band by playing in it, or they don't become, or they don't take any of your copyrights by creating with you, you know, work for hire agreements. Part of that, an important part of that always says that you're not an employee, you're an independent contractor and, uh, and, and they need to sign off on it and it still doesn't matter because what happens is the IRS is going to do their own independent thing, but I think you need it. I think you need to say that you're an independent contractor. You're not an employee. We don't have to give you insurance. We don't have to pay. We don't have to take out payroll taxes. Uh, we're, you know, we're not liable for workers comp. So what they do, the way they look at this, the IRS is, is really in three categories. Okay. Behavioral control. Number one, right. That's the one I'm familiar with. Financial yeah. control. Number two, and then the okay. relationship with the parties. 
Right. And you know, they don't look at they don't look at any one specific factor more than the others. But what they do is they, they I think what they do is kind of like what a judge does. They kind of know where you want to be. So they'll use each of those factors to try to figure out uh where to go. And yeah. unfortunately, it's they'll say, well, well, you know, wait a minute. That, that you know, you're hired that base player, you told them what to play, how to play it, where to be, how long they'd be there for, when they'd leave, what their volume was, where they stand, what equipment they're using. That's an employee. Yeah. They, yep. Yep. There was no they, that person didn't have any in the independent uh, control, uh, the behavioral control that you're speaking of. They did their thing. They but walk like a duck and quack like a duck, right? But ironically enough, you yeah. hire someone to paint your house. You say, uh, you know, I want you to do a Tuesday. Here's the color. I want I want rollers, not brushes, whatever. And that's an independent contract without right. any type of argument whatsoever. Right. So you, you listen. It's about again, Dave. You know, it's the law. So I'm making yeah. the argument. It's gray. Say, it's gray. It's never black and white. We hired the bass player, and that bass player played with whatever equipment they wanted. Yep. That bass player wasn't told how to play these songs. We the, we told the bass player that we were playing this song, and the bass player gave us his interpretation of that song on stage, and and that was fine. So you have to try to – sadly, you have to play the game. Yeah. It, or, <laughs> the, you know – the next morning, that bass player was gigging with another band, or that that bass player was working a delivery truck. You know, that she does whatever we want her to do, or what, whatever she wants to do. Things exactly. like that. Yeah. Uh, and and you know, playing with other with other uh, artists is another thing that, that plays into it too. Uh, right. The, the scheduling. It, it's. Uh, Sadly, it, it would break. New Jersey is trying to get rid of independent contractors across the board. Oh, right. they, I didn't know that. No, no state wants any independent contractors because they want people that are working to pay taxes to the state yeah, of New Jersey. Yeah, right. That, yeah, I don't agree with it, but that makes sense, at least from yeah. an incentivization point of view. But I think, it, but I think it would your, your average uh, Jersey Shore cover band. It, it, yeah. would, it would, but with all the insurances and everything, it would, it would probably wipe them out. Yeah. And, I mean, not only would it affect them financially, but I, I don't think anyone's going to keep up with with, the, with all the bookkeeping and, yeah. and reporting. No. And then every time something new comes up with how many employers are there and who has health insurance and all, all these other things, it, it, no no band is going to keep up. No, and then it just then it hurts the artists, which then hurts all the non artists who benefit from artists. Yes. You yes. know. Now you said something earlier, and it's. It's one of the probably 8 million subtleties of what we're chatting about tonight, which is, um, so I write a song, and let's say you're my 1099, right? Hey, hey, Tom, can you come over here? I just want to hear some drums to what I just wrote. And then you come up with a little twist on it, and that, that cha you know, it's a little shuffle maybe you come up with. And then that's the one song that hits, but I own it according to our contract, and you say, wait a minute. You know that that what I did to it was partially creating it. Now, how can on the front end, how can the uh, the band's operating agreement smooth over what could become unbelievable litigation? In in that circumstance, the band operating agreement isn't going isn't going to help you. Okay, uh, because you're bringing in uh, an outside musician to uh, write write a song with you. Okay. And what you need yeah. is yeah. a work for hire agreement because okay. what happens is copyrights can only be transferred through a writing. So it's like real estate. Okay. You, here, here's my house. There has to be a writing. Uh, I did not know that either. Interesting. I, I could say that all day long. I could say, oh, yeah, Dave, you know what? I, yeah, you no, know, I don't want anything. I don't want anything. All, all you want. And, and all of a sudden, it's a huge hit. And you say, well, wait a minute. Right. That, that's right. I was part of that creative process. And then what happens is then you, well, you know, the law says that, that uh, the, it subsists is the, is the word they use. Okay. And if there's, no, if there's no written agreement, it's whoever participated in that, uh, in that process owns an equal part of that copyright. I mean, to make it even sound more insane is you could be writing a great song, uh, you know, the crazy Daves, and then yeah. you have, and then you have Tom Janone show up because your drummer's sick one day right. and, uh, and, and you, 
and you, you, you know, you want to change a couple of things. I may have a suggestion and say, Hey, let's try it this way. Yeah. Yeah. A different way than the way you wrote. We do it that way. And you say, nah, you know what? I, I don't like it. And I say, okay. And you go and you switch it back again. Well, guess what? I was part of the songwriting process. Yeah. Even though what I contributed was nothing. Well, although the funny thing is, if I if I'm your lawyer asserting your rights in that, I say you helped in the process by helping us find our path. Even if we, even if your job was to say this other path won't work. So you know, you're you're yeah. You're thinking like you're thinking like a lawyer. Yeah, I can't help and, it sometimes. Yeah. And and and, and you're right. But those are uh, the the I don't know if I use the word unintended at the beginning yeah. of this. You know, the, the unintended consequences of not having a solid foundation. Yeah. You know, so what you want. So th that's part of the ancil ancillary agreements that you need to use to protect yourself. And that's the work for hire agreements. So if there's an, an LLC right. and you want to own everything and these guys are independent contractors, those in, part of the independent contractor agreement would be a work for hire agreement so that those work for, so those work for hire those independent contractors are musicians that are working with you gigging and you can pay them however you want okay uh, they they don't have to be on equal footing they don't have to be on lesser footing they can make more money than you uh, it, it doesn't matter what matters though is that you're not for, from an original standpoint you you've now not given away any of your copyrights because trust me if you end up making it you're, that's going to be carved up enough. You have right. to start out with 100. percent You can't you can't make any money when you're when, you, when you're when you're not starting out with 100 percent of your copyright. So that's interesting. So so in this example, right? Where let's say so so if if Tom Janarone is called in to help um, Crazy Dave and I forgot the Crazy Daves. That's what I mean. The Crazy Daves. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Um, and. You would, we would then have you sign a work for hire agreement before you even set foot in the studio. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then that gives the protection. Yes. Okay. Simple. And, and that's the amazing thing because, again, every single thing Tom is talking to all you about is to avoid the VH1 behind the music sad story where some artist ends up getting completely ripped off or penniless or otherwise hurt. Like Prince, even can't even, he doesn't even own his name. Work for it. And again, I don't know the specifics of that. I just remember that from years ago. Yeah. But, you know, work for high agreement, you, you could you could Google that. I mean, the work for high agreements that, that I have from uh, from you, I mean, they're not even a full page. It's, it's, right. it's literally a paragraph. Wave the person's wave. It's like a it's like back to the real estate. It's like a quick yeah. claim deed uh, yeah. or a prenup agreement. Uh, I once litigated one of those. Yeah, it's yeah. It, what it's saying is that hey, look, I I'm engaging in, in in a songwriting process, but any rights that I have or may have in the future, I'm a, to that copyright to that song, I'm assigning back to you. Yeah, it's per and, and, and it's it's simple and it's stupid to not have it signed. It is, and and you made me re remember something. I I once litigated a prenup case um, where the lawyer and everyone else lost the prenup. They had the unsigned one. So it, it's reminding me that, so if you go see Tom Janarone and he gives you this great advice, hang on to the damn paper, right? Yeah. You know? Well, thing, yeah, things are a little things are a little easier now. Because it's digital. You know, electronic and everything. Yeah. You know, a fire doesn't usually wipe people out unless the server was in the building that burned or right, right. You know, there's no backups, anything. Uh, uh, but it, it, it's, you know, it's so important. And again, uh, let me jump like kind of back into that band yeah. member agreement. Just give you a sense of really what what of how of what it of what it is. Okay. So the band member yeah. agreement, again, it's a it's a it's a document. I mean, it could be ten pages. It could be a thousand pages. Okay. Uh, and and really, you know, it starts out with you know with the with you know the the crazy days that you know the members of the bands, and that's where you get into whether it's independent contractors or not. Uh, you know, length or duration of the agreement itself, which is usually, and you know, uh, perpetual, unless there's a reason to, to, to stop it. Uh, right. And then you get into what's the band member services. So this goes into what I said earlier. I say, what are the rights and responsibilities of the member of the company? Forget it's a band. It could be an accounting firm. It could be, 
It could be a company fixing uh, as asphalt. And who's doing potholes? Who's doing driveways? Who's doing whatever? So what are the band members' services? Uh, uh, you know, the recording artists? Uh, are, they, are they just musical performers for for live performances? Uh, and then, of course, with the band member services you can get into, that's a place for, are there non-compete clauses? Right. So non -compete wow. clauses. That's, another, that's another whole show because you have to think about that. Because if Scott leaves the crazy Daves and he's been threatening start, that for a while. Yes. Yeah. And he wants to start yeah. the silly Scots. You know, yeah. you don't you need to make sure that he's not, you not, you know, taking everything that he learned from the crazy Daves and starting the silly Scots. So uh, is it as simple support. as let's say like, we'll run with that example. So let's say we're in a cover band as opposed to an, uh, an original band and, and, and this, and Scott, leaves as he probably should because i haven't been treating him very well um which i wouldn't do um and and he forms the silly scots can we actually when he's feeling weak can i take advantage of him and have him sign a non-compete that says uh you cannot be in a cover band in monmouth ocean and burlington counties or is that considered too restrictive if it's not original music like in other words he can we just can, it, oh, yeah it, it doesn't make a difference to purpose. It could be music, performing, uh, writing copy, digging ditches. Uh, Non-competes are based on what's what's reasonable under the circumstances. So, uh, you know, the purpose of a non-compete is to not hurt the person that holds the non-compete. Right. Uh, however, it's also can't hurt the person that signed it. To, to in other words, you can't have. Uh, if you were to say the non you, you sign a non compete agreement and there's okay. two things there's duration and there's scope. Okay. Those are two big things. So the first thing is you know, let's talk about duration. Is it for one year? Is it for two years? Is it for 20 years? So the shorter the duration, the larger the, the scope you're going to be allowed. Oh, so if you right. were to say Mammoth Ocean and Burlington and Scott lives in Mammoth, uh, he still he'd still be able to perform, but he would have to travel farther, and right. due to traveling farther, you know, it makes it more difficult for him. But you know what? But again, but it's out of fairness to, to you. And he knew that when the employment started. The important thing right. here is that those really need to be signed. If if a non compete is not signed at the very beginning, there needs to be additional consideration for it. Yeah. <laughs> Meaning, if we're, if we're, you know, if if the if someone in a crazy Dave's didn't sign a non compete agreement, once things start humming, you say, "Hey, Scott, sign this." Scott said, "Well, why do I have to sign this?" And you say, "Because I said so." Oh uh, yeah. Me, Scott, if you sign this, I'll give you X. And, right. And that would be legally binding. So if you want to go three counties for, you know, ten years or whatever. That may right. be allowed. It, again, it would be based on a totality of those circumstances. But if you're going to go for 10 years or something like that, again, the longer the duration, the shorter the scope. I had somebody try to get me sign a non-compete agreement for uh, for 90 miles. And when you're in New oh, Jersey, really? New Jersey that's, the, that's the whole state. Forget the whole state. It's New York City. It's Philly. Philadelphia. Yeah. It, it, where are you going to work as an entertainer if you can't be in? And if you're if you're going to if you plan on staying in New Jersey, you can't play Jersey, New York, or, or Philly. Right. Uh, Ninety miles. I don't think it reaches D.C., but it's probably pretty damn close. Yeah. It. it uh, it's interesting because you know, in my world and yours, well, in one aspect of your world, you know, lawyers ethically were not allowed to have non competes. So, so my brain really, and I haven't litigated and I helped out a friend many years ago on one. So it's, it's largely as I take it, whatever the parties agree to when they agree to it, so long as a court might not look at it some years later and say that was just eminently unfair. Maybe like a contract of adhesion would be the magic language you and I would use. But if it's, if it's not considered a ridiculous lopsided, they forced it down on you agreement i guess they're enforceable right yeah interesting yeah. again exactly it's all based on it's very difficult for a per, you know for someone says hey i signed a non-compete it's for uh this square miles in this many years i mean of course if it's for 
It depends. It, it depends on what you're doing. Right. And, when, and if you're if you're online sales, I mean, that's a whole different thing than if you're a handyman and your garage is in Long Branch. It, right. You know, there's two different things. So it's it's all a case by case basis. But you know, the the uh, the the angry cousin of the non compete agreement is actually in and should be in any band member agreement. And that's the what act what what non band activities are allowed. Oh yeah, that that's yeah. an important part of it. I mean, because like I said, you you know, hopefully none of these things matter. But just like prof professional athletes, they have clauses of what they like ultra hazardous activities. Right, you need an athlete to be in good shape and not be hurt. There, you can bet your butt that in these contracts, there's uh, there's activities they're not allowed to engage in. Right, because if they do. You know, you can, if your quarterback wants to go out running around playing paintball or skydiving and stuff like that, uh, there's too much invested in that. So the question is, what you know, what non band activities are you going to allow the other people in the crazy days to get to engage in? Right. It, it may be as simple as are, are they allowed to play in other bands? If right. they are, what extent? Uh, you know, typically, you know, the wording would be like anything that doesn't interfere with the, the crazy days. Crazy yeah. Crazy days. Right. And so, yeah. So again, that's what kind of circles back to non compete. Is, is it a part of a non compete or is it part of what non back, what non band activities are allowed? Right. And, and, and what you're making me think of now, I think, you know, it, 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 if, if I'm 25 years old and I'm starting a band and I've got whatever level of life experience and maturity I'm going to have at 25, which I know for me wasn't a lot, uh, my inclination would be to just grab any band agreement off the internet and just make all four members sign, which strikes me as a potentially horrible uh, decision. Yeah. Because, you know, perhaps my keyboard player likes to do studio work. Perhaps I like to do studio work. Perhaps, you know, our singer likes to go on Broadway now and then, and we want to foster that. But now that we're enemies and there has to there happens to be some stock language that destroys that for them, you know, yeah. it's, you know, I think a lot of folks, it's easy for you and I, a lot of folks who aren't lawyers will say, oh, we just need a band contract. And then I know, I, I'm not a contract lawyer, but I know enough to know you need a contract that fits your needs appropriately, right? Yeah, and, and again, you know, let's, 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 you're driving home a very, very important point, and let's circle back to where we started. Yeah. If you don't have a band member agreement, you do have a band member agreement. Right. And that band right. member agreement is whatever the, the UPA says, Uniform Partnership Agreement says. So and what that and what that's gonna say is all four of you own everything equally, right? All right, and again, and so now if someone's out, if someone quits the band or gets fired from the band. Now, uh, most people just walk away. But again, root of all evil, success and money. Yeah, success and Absolutely. money. Absolutely. Yep. They're not going that easily, and you know there's 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 countless cover bands. And I, 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 you know, of course, I'd never share that information. That have struggled. Right. Uh, they've struggled because a band member has left. A lot of times, a band member leaves, and it's and it's a friendly, and they're like, "Okay, well, what am I gonna get?" And they're like, um, "I don't know, another job." Right, 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 exactly. And that's and, a reasonable you know, expectation without knowing the law, right? I've been in this band for ten years. I'm entitled to something. Yeah, and. If there was no agreement, if they said, "Well, we have no contract with you," yes, you do. You yeah. just don't. You just don't know it. Uh, you know. So you know. Then the other things, uh, you know, within that contract, you know, circling back into that yeah. is, you know, there's warranties and promises that the band makers are, are gonna, the band members are gonna make uh, to the organization. Like, uh, first of all, you have to make a, 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 you have to say, "Look, I'm not, I'm not, not under an agreement with any other band. Therefore, right. I have the rights." To sign this agreement, number one, uh, you know, conduct. Yeah. You can't engage in conduct that would hurt the, the reputation of the band. Of course, if we were in the 80s and we were Motley Kurazi, I guess there's really yeah. nothing you could do to hurt the reputation of the band. Yeah, Scott uh, talked about that. Scott sent us a little note about Mick Mars and Motley Crue. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Uh, and and again, I would love to get a hand to get a 
get a hold of their contract to see under what circumstances they can try to knock him from 25% down to 5%. Right. Who, who knows? Uh, you, you know what? But they, I mean, they've been represented by Doc McGee. Whew. I mean, since, I mean, Doc McGee was representing them when I first met Doc McGee back in the late 80s. Okay. So, I mean, I, I know that that band has got to be put together properly. Uh, who knows? Maybe they're just doing it because, you know, for the same reason that, you know, Tommy Lee thought it was a good idea to throw a bottle of Jack Daniels through the bullet train window in Japan. Uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't know. It could just be because they're rock stars and it's something to talk about, something to get all the radio stations to talk about. I. I don't know. I, I don't know if that's yeah. the case because I think a lot of negative is coming out of that. Uh, but anyway, the conduct to hurt the band is certainly something that you have to worry about because you own a brand. Your band, yeah. Crazy Dave's, is a brand. It is. And and you know the other things. There's something people aren't going to think about is you the Crazy Dave's. It's Dave and Scott. You guys own 50, 50, 50 Right. Right. So what's to stop Scott from saying? I'm selling 25% of my subletting his interest, so to speak, to somebody else to make to make yeah. money on it. And now you've got another individual involved in the mix here. Yo, come on. You, you know what? You, you don't you don't you don't want to be involved with that person. I mean, it yeah. could be you don't like the person, it could be that person's harmful to your brand. Yeah. Uh, you don't know. So one of the things you, you need to have in there is transfer of interest. Under what circumstances can Scott sell hit or transfer or gift? Or whatever his percentages of the band, or in, in in testacy issues, or not in testacy, but testamentary yeah. issues, right? That's exactly what else you're gonna say? Yeah. Yeah. You know, are you going? Are you going to, uh, you know, now be in business with Scott's wife, right? Or Scott's children? Yeah. Uh, you know what? That's a question you have to ask. I mean, my vote is I'll definitely be in business with Scott's wife. I, 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 I'm, right. I'm thumbs up on that. We one. would both take her over Scott, in all honesty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but but you but you know, I mean, you, you want to be able to control your destiny. You want to be able to know who you're. Right. Uh, you know, the, the other thing that we we already touched on ownership of the band name, and you know, and and the band name. It's really not just a band name. It's intellectual property. Period. Right. The band name. Who owns that? The logo, the trade dress, um, and then of course that rolls into the uh all the issues of copyright song ownership uh the, the recorded compositions you know who owns these songs uh you know and, and again in an absence of an agreement everyone everyone's gonna own them uh, yeah and, and and there's a there's and, and i suspect you you've done at least a few of these in your career the the perfect real life example is that of a will you know i yeah. said this, intestacy which which tom knows but others might not that means if someone passes away without a will so if you have a family with four kids and two are estranged from mom uh when she passes if there's no will those kids share equally in whatever money mom left it's the same exact example and, if and, you don't share, make the plan. and sharing the income that's, yeah. a, that, that's another one uh, okay. what's a division of song income now again oh, this right. is another two hour another two hour seminar just on the copyrights and publishing and song income. All right. That's another whole thing. But these are things you have to address that up front. And you know, if the band sets up a publishing company, which which they should, okay. Uh, was a publishing being divided, which is different than the song income. You know, right. is it equal among all members? Is do the writers split the writer's share and the band splits the publishing share? Uh, or is it some sort of compromise system you make up on your own? Right. Which you know can be said across a lot of things. And, and then there's a practical issue you just made me think of, is if you have a publishing company, then you're going to go down, I would guess, the trademark route again. You'll want to find, like, didn't Townsend have Eel Pie Records? Wasn't that his publishing company? I don't, you know. I don't know. But, you know, so you might decide, you know, um, you know, Noise Network, you know, Scott and I would have this, you know, adjunct recording or publishing company, right? So then you have to go down that same route again, or, or at least consider it, because now you have your band name, your trade name is here, and maybe you have a different name. Maybe it's out of the four members of the band, maybe two are part of the publishing company, and they bring in a third so that you don't have mirror um, populations of each entity, right? Yeah, absolutely. That, that's wow. again, You're getting into another whole company, right? Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and, and then within that publishing company, there's the administration of the publishing rights. Right. Who's yeah. doing that? How is that set up? 
Who's paying for it? Because right. the because let me look. The administration, you know, that word means entering into contracts uh, regarding the songs, making decisions on how songs are used. But right. you you have a you have a great great hit. It's going to be a huge hit, and you decide that you know your publisher is going to release it as a commercial for a product that you do not like, or that you don't think is popular. Right. for the audience that you are going after in the crazy days. And that song, you're making some money on it because that, that is now the, the, the flagship song for this product. Okay. That, that song's never going to be a hit because every time people, every time people hear that song, they're going to think of adult diapers or whatever product it is. They're not going to yeah. think about what a great song it is. So, you know, that's, that's part of the, you know, the, another, the whole administration part of it is having control of, of of what's happening administration uh the, the administration wing you need to control how those things are being uh what contracts you're being entered into you know uh they also make sure they're collecting the royalties uh the, you know the administrators a lot of times want to sue the infringers uh and then they uh, uh they may be the ones that work with departed members and so let's say someone leaves the band and they get a small piece because there's some sort of sunset clause. So they may be dealing with uh, paying band members uh, based on whatever piece of they own of, of, of the publishing, even though right. they're not in the band anymore. It's, and of course, you yeah. know, keeping and accounting. Right. You get, who's, who's responsible for that? You're, you're putting it on the band. Who signs checks? You, Scott, right. both of you. That's right. Uh, who maintains the books? Where are the books maintained? Who chooses the accountant? Who chooses the? Who chooses there's the, always issues with that. Trust who issues. All the professionals. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? And and auditing and edit and auditing rights. So. Oh yeah. You're, you're you know the the you know the 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 drummer of your band feels like she's not getting her fair share, and she says, "I, I want you know I, I want to see the Crazy Dave LLC books. I want I want to see your books. So that contract should address the rights." of members it could be any owner right of, of everybody of you know anyone anyone that's involved it's your breakdown yeah. reporting are you going to report the income monthly uh disbursements is it going to happen monthly quarterly annually right. uh, you know you don't know how, and how are profit and losses dealt with and and, and i apologize i'm i'm Responding to you with questions rather than answers. No, these this, but this is perfect. It's <laughs> lit. No, but this, but I, I think you're making the point better like that because every band's needs will be different, and, and I think one of our our purposes, which you're you're perfectly satisfying right now, is, is to sensitize folks that at whatever level of success, because everything you're saying now is equally important to the band that plays. 20 gigs a year versus a band that plays, you know, 100 or 200 or 300 gigs a year. Uh, because all of these questions are things that simply need to be addressed in sitting down with each other and saying, all right, this is what we think we want to do. Now let's go into Tom's office, Tom Janeron's office, and say, how do we accomplish this? And in, in chatting with you on, you know, say, I, I'm hearing this about the consult. If it, if I were starting a band, I'd say, Tom, can we come in once every three months and sort of touch base with you and have a consult as we're evolving, as we're growing? And then you could help guide them and say, here's the right instrument. Um, and that, that was a no pun intended, but it actually works as a pun. Um, but here's the right instrument to get you there. Here, are we need a non-compete for you. But now, if you want the non-compete, we really need to change the band agreement because we want the documents to, to reflect each other. You know, or, or to be consistent yeah. with each other. And it, it's it. And the funny thing is, as much as the left brains people don't want to deal with this, by dealing with it, you're actually freeing up your left brain to be a creative person because you have fewer headaches down the road. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to deal with the anxiety of the unknown. Yeah. Or the fighting. And, and anywhere you go, yeah. I mean, that yeah. really, that, that, band, that, that band member agreement is is really is, is your is your bible that's your instruction that's the word manual. i was going to use yep that, that's the instruction manual uh, uh to to your life to your business and that's yeah. what you need to refer to uh um, yeah 
I mean, the little things that, that they don't think of too. Uh, you know, how are profits and losses dealt with? Right. Who owes the losses if there's money owed, right? Yeah. I mean, how, how, how does, how does that work? And actually, what is a, what's a profit? What's the definition of a net profit? Yeah. You need to find that. Now, the good thing, now you hear, you know, this actually brings up a very important thing. That okay. If, and that if any musician listening to this, if they can get this one thing, this is the most important thing out of, out of day. And we're ready. That, whether they realize it or not, if you're in a band and your band, you lose money on the year because you bought studio equipment, you did all these things and you lose money on the year. Okay. And you have a day job. You can write those life, those those losses off against the taxes you paid in your day job. Wow. Yeah. Right. And that's that's important because a lot of these bands have day jobs. So my suggestion now, the IRS says, and I believe they still do, that if you have losses in your business for any three out of five years, not necessarily consecutive, but three out of five years, it's no longer a business. It's a hobby. That makes and, sense. Yeah. And, and, then you, and then you can't itemize deductions because it's a hobby. So yeah. my suggestion is if you're starting up a band, a cover band. Right. Year one, you're going to have the least amount of gigs. Year two, you'll have more gigs. Year three, hopefully you have more gigs. My suggestion is to whatever degree possible, spend all your money up front and buy the things that you need to in those first three years. And you so and then you run it at a loss for the first yeah. three years so that everything you're buying, you're not paying 100% for because you're getting money back. Yeah, you're paying about 66 cents on the dollar, roughly, for that. So now, yeah, so now you're getting money back from yeah. your day job because you've now shown a loss in the band. And then after three years, of course, you can't do that anymore. Uh, maybe you can again down the road after a you know, year. few years of, of, of making money. But yeah. it's just, I mean, it's something to think about. Do you have to do it? No. I just think it's something to think about, and I wish... Uh, uh, I, 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 I mean, I shouldn't say I, I wish I knew it because I kind of did, yeah. uh, but I didn't do it right. <laughs> yeah, well, life life kind of gets in the way from us all periodically making the right decisions, right? Yeah. But, you know, it, it's... Decisions, that? and that's the word. Yeah. The probably decision. what I think is the most important part of that operating agreement. Meetings yeah. and voting. Wow. All right? Yeah. How, how are decisions made? Is it majority? Is it unanimous? And... Yeah. You know, not not all decisions are created equal. So you may want unanimous to dissolve the band. You may want, uh, uh, you know, 51 percent on song selection or uh, you may need uh, a majority to expel a member. Of course, right. the, you, you can never have a unanimous vote to expel a member unless the person wants out. <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and and you, I guess you could have a contract that assigns percentage voting rights. And absolutely. then, and, and I did that. Yeah, that makes sense. And then I, if someone quits or leaves or is kicked out of the band, the new member will be brought into that contract, filling in that, you know, those 18% voting rights or whatever they might have. Yeah. Well, and, and the, typically the way something like that would happen is if they're going to, uh, and this is my suggestion. I did this. It was a big to do about voting rights with this, original band that I met with years and years ago. And it was very interesting because it was almost like a game of survivor or something. And it was okay. sitting there calculating about who was side with who and who would have what percentage to get. All right. Yeah. It was very, it was very interesting to sit there and kind of be the, be the coach. And right. what they're worried about is the unknown, the, the new person coming in. And my suggestion was very simple. The new person that comes in doesn't have any rights. All the voting rights from the departing member goes to you guys. I they love have that. Yeah. And once yeah. The band, and once they've been involved in the band long enough, you can jointly can decide. Them. Yeah. You could assign them based on what it says in the operating agreement about decisions. You guys can decide to make, give that person whatever voting power that person that they, you feel that person. Right. Uh, yeah. The other question too is: Do you set up a pension plan? Wow. If you plan on being a long term. Uh, there's a very successful cover band that's out there now. Uh, they, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna really say say who it is, but uh, even though it's a good thing, and they were they were sharp enough back in the late '80s 
uh, early '90s to set up to, to set up retirement. They had, they were they were saying retirement, and I remember when I first heard that, and I was like twenty something years old, and I'm like, who do these guys think they are? We they're never saying, get old. They're setting up retirement accounts. Right, yeah, they think that they're rock stars. Yeah, well, guess what? It's 2023. They're still playing, and they're playing because they love it, and their retirements are so great. They they were lucky enough to not have to have day jobs, and they're going to retire. Uh, you know, on top of Social Security, they're going to have a nice pension, and and uh, that, that that's something else to think about. It is, and then I'm even thinking about the voting rights issue. I would guess you could contract your way into having different percentage voting rights for artistic versus financial issues. Absolutely, sure. You know, yeah. I don't because like the direction Scott is too crazy with his, you know, his heavy metal drumming. I never liked it, you know, and I want to do all my John Anderson poetry crap, you know, and we could have voting rights on that. A lot of times, too, you know, you could have a, a guy who says, man, I just play bass. You guys, you guys tell me what direction we're going to go. I'm just here. I'm just here to I'm just here to play bass. Right, right, and, right. And that person may know that they're not the right person to pick the songs. That you know, there usually is one, maybe two people in a group that kind of understand the direction because everyone right. has a different vision. And, yeah. and that's the beauty and the problem <clears throat> with music is that it is subjective. Yeah, it, it really is. is. Yeah, I mean, you know, the keys and <laughs> notes aside, everything's subjective and how they're used. Yeah, absolutely. And dissolution of band becomes a big thing when. Uh, you're talking when you're talking about uh, things such as uh, like kind of moving down your list there. Yeah. Uh, band equipment. Yeah. You know, band equipment is a is a big thing that's part of the operating agreement. Who owns the band equipment? Yeah. It, it's you know if one guy leaves, I'm taking my PA with me. Right. Well, you know, or does everyone have their, does everyone have their own stuff? Well, he, here's what you're making me think of. Um, 50% of the people in this country get divorced, right? 100% of the people who get divorced without a prenup make family law lawyers a lot of money, yeah. right? And, and what you're talking about here is that this is really a prenup. It's more than that because it allows you to operate. So it's, it's more than that. But, but a small piece of it is a prenup where if there is whatever emotions are related to or not related to a band breakup, Holy crap! Is it easier if the 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 divvying up of the band equipment is a piece of that contract? Here it is in black and white. We don't have to. We can't fight about it. It says yeah. what it says. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, who owns the house, who owns the car, who has the yeah, family? who owns Not the all. dog. Same thing, you know. I mean, typically the suggestion is band gear should be owned by the company, right. and and the artists own their individual instruments. Makes uh, sense. And, and that's really, but then you get into other things as the band grows. Yeah. Uh, you know, Scott, Scott sent me uh, a, a great thing uh, from the, the, from uh, Nickelback. Uh, I think it was a TikTok. I had a huge party at my place and we were going on tour the next day. And so I partied till, I don't know, probably seven in the morning. And there was all these buses lined up and all these trucks. And remember getting out that morning? Mm -hmm. We got out. And I'm like, who are all these people? And our, our, our tour manager comes over and goes, that, all those guys over there, that's your lighting crew. I'm like, who, who's that? Well, that's audio. Well, who's this? That's pyro. Who's the guy standing right behind me? That's your new bodyguard. It was kaboom. And, and I'm like, where are we going? How big is this tour? It's like, it's the whole world, Chad. I'm like, the whole world? He goes, yeah, and by the way, it's sold out. Is it overwhelming? Yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, that kind of speaks for itself. And all of a sudden, a guy opens his eyes, and there's a line of tractor trailers. And it's like, wow. Like, this is all my stuff. Like, this is the responsibility. So, the, you know, the, the bigger the band gets, the bigger the problems get. Yep. If you don't nip it in the butt from the, from the beginning, you know, where you have – uh, and now I guess, you know, a lot of times like that, you're leasing things and, and whatnot, but still, when you're putting in the studios, there, there can be a lot of money in, in band gear and yeah. you know, divvying up losses because, you know, once you buy equipment to sell it, 
you, yeah. you know it's going to be a loss. I, 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 you hunt 10 out of 10 times, unless it's like a vintage guitar, which is personal. Yeah. But And and I would think, re, and remember, we're talking about artists, right? So then, there, you know, we, we, we spent a ton of time on Guitar Tales talking about gear. So if you don't have that agreement, people might get attached. Like if, it, if it's obviously, if it's just a speaker for a PA, that's one thing. But let's say it's a Hammond organ, yeah. right? And, and and you know the you know the guitar player also plays a little keyboard. The keyboard player leaves, and the guitar player has an emotional attachment to that Hammond because it was built in 1969 or what have you. If that's not in the contract, you're looking at either unpleasant fighting or litigation or a little bit of both. Yeah. And if it's in the contract, you know the person who loses it might be a little disappointed, but it's kind of, it's there. That's what you agreed to. And a lot of times when things go bad, more often than not, it's because there's no money and right. you're going to compound the situation. There's no money and you're going to need money <laughs> to, to fight. Yeah. And, you know, and it's not just dissolution in the band, but it's sort of like uh, when a band member leaves, you know, you need to address a, a band member that leaves. Uh, you know, right. and is it voluntary or is it involuntary? Were they kicked out or is it just they decided they wanted to go uh, th their own way? You need right. yeah, you need uh, triggers to say yeah. which triggers a person to be kicked out of the band. You, you really need to have certain things that are black right. and white. You don't end up in, 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 in a litigation. Uh, it, how, how do you – and the other thing, too, that you're, you're talking about the estate type situation. How yeah. do you determine the band's net worth if there's going to be a payoff? If you're trying to get someone out, you right. know, if uh, if they turn around and they say, "Look, you know, you're kicking me out of Motley. You're you're effectively kicking me out of Motley Crue. Uh, what's the band's net worth? I want my twenty five percent." Yeah, yeah. You know, how how is that even determined? Is is is, is part of uh, is a big part of the contract? Uh, is it three actuarial or forensic accounts? Is it one? Who is that forensic account? It can't be your cousin. You know, well, yeah, and, and I, I think, um, I, I think it's always, I think it's always important uh, that when you're dealing with uh, with someone that's leaving, a lot of times you you should uh, put things in advance, like they get X amount of dollars, right? Like so, you know, up front, it's much harder when you're uh, when you're I, I, actually a very good point. You're not in front of a judge. What you want in this, what you really want in these contracts is you you want you want to go to a mediator first. Yes. And then you want to get a binding arbitration. You don't want to have to go in front of a judge. This way it makes it cheaper for everybody. But if you're going to go in front of an arbitrator, a mediator, you want to be able to say, hey, look, here's what the contract says. The contract says the guy left voluntarily, and we're, we're not dealing with the net worth of the band. A leaving member, he or she left on their own accord. They weren't happy. We're giving them you know, whatever, you know, the contractually, they're going to be entitled to whatever they're entitled to right. if they aren't enough to do contracts for any type of song, any type of copyright intellectual property issues. But then there's a, then there's kind of a buyout. You say, look, you're the party member. You want out, we're going to give you a thousand dollars, you know, yep. you know, see you later. And uh, let's not forget that non-compete you signed either. So right. you hope you're not going to, you know, approach any of the places we're playing. Uh, right. That's important, but you know, again, the, the the bands, the band equipment stuff is not. It's not a. It's not a small issue because people forget. I mean, I have stuff in my. I have stuff in, in my basement, and I've heard about your basement. We we've been playing. Yeah. We've been playing down there for, I guess, like four years now, okay. and I constantly say, "Is this mine?" Like yeah. I don't remember if I bought it or not. Like, like, you know, it, there's it, just it, so much. In other words, like if Scott emptied my emptied my basement out and took all, all the crap, I wouldn't even I wouldn't know if half of it's mine because you don't really remember right. You buy it. And that's why it's important too with equipment. And when you have a band, when you buy stuff, it's, it, it's important. And that kind of ties into the that last thing is the insurance end of it. Yeah. You buy, if you're buying band equipment, you need to document it. And yeah. a lot of people, a lot of people, they do it. They may take a picture with their phone. You want serial numbers. You want to know where you bought it and how much you paid for it. Right, and, and, and that's for your accountant too. For right? your accountant, and and then you, you make a decision. You know, do you want that warranty? You know, do you want to buy that five dollar item at Guitar Center and then pay thirty dollars for the extended warranty? Right, right. I right. mean, 
you know, I mean, uh, uh, sometimes it makes sense. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. But what's important is that you know that if there's a warranty that needs to be in properly in the books of the band. So if the PA craps out, you can say, hey, I can bring this back to Lake House Music and they're going to fix it for me for free, as opposed to paying somebody to fix something that's not necessary. Right. Yeah, that, that's interesting. That's like a good organizational issue, because in the world, whether it's rock or otherwise, we know we all know rock is a pretty chaotic world. I'm sure other forms are, too. And taking that little extra step and maybe assigning someone to be in charge of it, whether it's your accountant, maybe it's your band manager, maybe and, it's, and, yeah. And my suggestion always is to use credit cards. Yeah, it keeps a good record. Card helps your helps your accounting. It yep. also puts you in a better uh, situation when it comes to disputing a charge if you're buying something that doesn't work. Right. But again, the sad reality is most bands horse trade. Who buys a guitar from whom and yeah. and PA I got from my buddy and this one was built and then that one. So I mean, you know, to each his own, but the the the, the point's not lost. You're buying new equipment, you're buying used equipment, it doesn't matter. You should document still. I yeah. bought it from you now. There may be no warranty, there may be nothing you can do, but at least if there's ever an argument about it, you have it. And you right. know, taking pictures of the equipment is also important too. And if you're gonna insure the equipment, which I recommend, you're gonna need to do all these things anyway. That equipment, yeah, if, if and that's buying, that's a yeah. And, and if you buy the equipment for the band the company so now guitar tales llc now has assets guitar sales llc now has a pa a van um uh, and, and and other and miscell and miscellaneous gear some amps a practice drum set right right these things you're, you're going to want to uh, you're going to want to insure that stuff uh again the insurances you're going to want to insure the truck uh because if you're using it for band purposes but the, what's imp also important about the insurance stuff is, excuse me, about the band owning the stuff is that now, how is that being done for tax purposes? Are you deducting it? Uh, for the depreciation. Not about that. Is yeah. it, uh, you, you can depreciate it. And I think right. it, like one seventh of the value over seven years. So you could, you could write off your taxes for seven years. You depreciate the value of, of the equipment. Right. Or I guess the itemized description is, is the other way uh, to go. And, and I can't tell you what's the, what's the better way to go. But um, there has to be a way. All that you're trying to communicate is you have to go one of those ways. You yes. can't not do it, right? Yeah. yeah. I can't tell you that. Yeah, I can't tell you the best thing to do. But you know what I can tell you? That there's something to do. Yeah. Do something. Yeah. And, and then your segue is so great because we started to bleed into the insurance issue a bit. Something I know a little bit. Actually, everyone knows a little bit about that. So, so obviously, if there's a banned vehicle, you want insurance for that. Talk about general liability insurance and, and what you recommend for folk for folks. Well, it really starts with business insurance. Okay. And uh, although I've never filed or owned any of these policies, uh, ASCAP and BMI, and I think CSAC may uh, may or may not, but I know ASCAP and BMI used to have uh, insurance policies for for artists for okay. business business interruption. Oh, I didn't yeah. hear much about that during COVID. I, I I thought I would, but then again, maybe I wasn't reading the right things. Yeah, there was all sorts of litigation. I didn't hear anything about music or performance related litigation. Yeah, I, I don't. So now that business insurance is is also. Uh, within that could be uh, general liability for uh, for band related things. Right. Now, right. Uh, the vehicle insurance speaks for itself. I mean, whether it's personal vehicles or 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 uh, or band uh, or or band things. Right. Uh, a lot of times things are leased, but if you lease it, you have to make anything you're even leasing. You have to make sure there's great insurance. So, I mean, I mean, look at like look, look at Metallica, you know, a, a, a bus accident, and someone dies. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the band's not not playing a gig; it's turned around forever. They, they lose a member. I mean, yeah. 
you know, you, 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 there's liability there. And there is, yeah. You know, you know, for, you know the, if the bus driver falls asleep or black ice or whatever the story is, there's, there's liability. So now let, let's say you was someone, it, it was your bus and it was the roadie driving the bus. Right. And this player's killed. Well, you better That's hope, that, you better hope that there's insurance for that. Yeah. It, it, know, on top of the tragedy for the person who died, it could wipe you out financially. Like, Literally, you're done. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, in the general liability insurance, you know, would cover normal things that would happen during the course of operating the band. But right. the other thing that's important is that if any of the band members have uh, have homeowners own a home, they yeah. should have homeowners insurance. Because what, ha what can happen sometimes, there's conduct, kind of like in the band agreement. There's conduct yeah. that's not permitted outside of the uh, the scope of things. So right. if you if you're if you're singing and or playing guitar and you're strapping your guitar breaks and it falls into the crowd and hurts someone, or you're or, or or you're singing on the microphone and you kick your mic stand by accident and it falls in into yeah. the crowd and uh, and hurts someone's face, which is impossible nowadays. And, in concerts because you'd hit the iPhone first. Yeah, right, right, uh, right, right. And you're and, so far away, but yeah. But the, those things would be covered under a general liability policy. Right, um, and that's important. And, and, then, and then for ownership of your stuff, uh, like, remember Rick Derringer had all his stuff stolen out of his apartment oh, yeah. a few years ago? You know, yeah. I and I kind of remember, if you read the stories, it didn't seem like he had insurance coverage because everyone felt, Badly, not just for the sentimental value of his stuff, but the fact that he, I don't think he could afford it, you know? Uh, it, it, it's terrible. You can't. I mean, yeah. and even if you get something new, you spend all those years, you know, to setting up things the way you want them to sound. Yeah. And, you know, guitars yeah. are broken in a certain way. And, you know, it, it's, 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 it's craziness. But, you know, it, let, let me go back to that general liability real quick. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You, you drop your mic or you drop your guitar. All right, well, you know, let's say, you know, in the heat of the moment, you throw your guitar into the crowd or you throw your mic into the crowd. All right. Well, now th that may not be covered by the uh, yeah. insurance policy. Of the band. Intentional conduct. Now, it's intentional conduct or it may be considered reckless and maybe the mm -hmm. only the only covered negligent. Your yeah. homeowner's insurance might, co might cover anything other than intentional. So there's a chance that let, let's say this conduct is beyond the scope of what the, what's insured by the uh, the by general the liability. Yeah. Say the insurance policy says it has an assault and battery exclusion uh, for yeah. negligence in in in, in the business in the uh, general liability, which I would think they would. Yeah. And the singer jumps into the crowd and socks someone in the face, right? Uh, or 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 maybe he jumps into the crowd and gets into a tussle with someone and and hurts somebody. So where it's not intentional, where it's considered negligent because he's fighting. Well, homeowner's insurance would actually cover that. Yeah. Although yeah, the bank true. insurance might not. Then you have the gray areas. Let's say you're, you know, you're you're, you're in the who and you're spinning your microphone. That's and right. Attached, and it flies. Is that negligent? Is that covered under your insurance? Is it reckless, no. right? I, I you're spinning I, it pretty I, fast, you know. Yeah, you, you know what? That's you know, you don't know. You don't know the answer yeah. to those things or, you know, whatever things you're doing. So you need to be careful from the insurance standpoint uh, with that. And it got the crossover to it's always good to have an umbrella policy on your homeowner's insurance. For those Absolutely. Things. Yep. So then the, so the next question is, do you, is there workers comp? Right. We talked about that earlier. Yeah. No employees. You don't need workers comp. Right. But, you know, what if someone's injured? And then the other thing too is health insurance. Mm -hmm. I mean, nowadays it's kind of different because you have to have health insurance or you get what's like a thousand dollar fine or something. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so, but these are all again, it's another whole seminar talking about. Yeah, or you disability know, insurance you could buy. What do we we've identified business insurance, general amount of, general not <laughs> general liability, <laughs> yeah. vehicle insurance, homeowners insurance, workers comp insurance. Uh, and there and there's more, and right. that just can that, that can go on. Uh, it's and, and I think the answer is I simple. don't have I don't have all on. the answers, but.
No, but you have the, the question. The, 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 yeah, the answer is simple. The answer is you need to know. Yes. You, you, you need to know yeah. what it is that you need to get and when you need to research. Yeah. And, and, and to me, all of this, you know, a, a band that, that forms in 2022 has different needs in 2023 and 2024. And, and to me, I would think a, a, a working successful band that's generating income that is not static would want to periodically just have have sort of just a, a sit down with their attorney and say, here's where we're at. Here's our books. You know, here, here's these are the three different policies of insurance we have. Are, are our limits enough? You know, we, we brought in a new member. You know, what do we do? Is there a rider? What do we have to do? But I think the, the, the theme that we have today is that, and, and you're fulfilling it perfectly, is you, you cannot be in this business, right? That was the wrong way. Business. There we go. Uh, I don't know why I did fist. I did fist bumps, so that didn't work. But um, you can't just be an artist. If you're going to be in this business, you have to think about some practical issues. And what we've been chatting about uh, is the fact that the law intersects with many, many things in our lives. And the operation um, and, and the happiness quotient of a band is dependent upon how it interacts with the law. You know, And then we've got one more item here. So the do's and don'ts of obtaining employment for your band. What are some of the issues there? <laughs> now, oh, it's now, too now, much. That's now, a whole two hours. Now you're getting to the fun stuff. First of all, at the business. So then really the next question is the uh, where do I find this information? Do, you know, is it just from an attorney? If I don't want to hire an attorney, how do I get that information? So I've just recently started right. getting doing entertainment stuff for, uh, you know, years ago. And then I kind of took the direction I was doing a lot with professional wrestlers, some comedians and things like that. And I really wasn't doing much uh, in the, in the music end. And now I've kind of steered back. So I said, all right, well, what, what's relevant and what's not relevant because it changes so much. And, you know, the big, the big publications, uh, uh, this business of music and Cohen on licensing. What I forgot was that some of these books are $600 a piece and wow. they are, I mean, they're like they're like le they're they're legit legal treatises and okay. they, well end all. So I started doing a little research and put together a little library at, at my home of things that were more more relevant and easier to read for the end user. Okay, and I stumbled upon this 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 one book. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it, and I have I have no I have no stake in this. I don't know, uh, I, I don't know anyone. Uh, from this book. I just, I bought it on Amazon, uh, the plain and simple guide to music publishing. Okay. So Randall uh, Wixon. And there's a great forward written by Tom Petty. And this book, it was uh, done in 2020. So it's still a relatively uh, yeah. recent with, with, with the dig with digital issues and uh, uh, the, uh, the 360 deals and that stuff. But this is very plain and simple. And if you read, uh, after uh, after Tom Petty's forward, there's an introduction. There's like a four page introduction, and if you just read the introduction, that's really all. That's really all you're gonna need. I mean, not all you need, but that's all you need to really ask yourself all sorts of questions. And then you read the book, and it goes into a deeper. It goes into a deeper with with great with great detail. You know, and it looks to me that the, the book is probably a pretty manageable, maybe 200 pages or so compared to like a 600 page treatise or something. Yeah. Right? And you know what? You, you, you definitely win nerd of the day because the book is actually 202 pages. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, 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 with the index is 209 pages. So yeah. I never, when I computed in my head, I never include the index. All right. So I, I have to do. Definitely two hundred pages. Definitely two hundred pages. I do a Rain Man impersonation. Um, so, but so what I like about this is that you've pointed out for everyone uh, just a real clean document that they could buy on their own. That, they, like you said, they don't have to spend six hundred dollars for a book, and, and that allows people to educate themselves. And you and you said I think you mentioned that there was there was an introduction written by Tom Petty or yeah. forward. Yeah, but then yeah. you said the introduction in four pages, it sort of summarizes why everything we're talking about tonight and what we, we've decided will probably make a two-part series 
um, is so important to not ignore, right? It's you know what? It's twenty four ninety nine, and that's a hardcover new. I'm sure you yeah. could find it uh, cheaper if you wanted to buy it used. But yeah, Dave, with that, with, with this book covers is the the the, the music publishing aspect, which we you know we kind of we kind of we teased it because we had to talk about it. Yeah. But most of the people that are listening to it kind of know what it means, but n- not exactly. So if you take all the things that we talked about today, right, and you you put that solid foundation together for your for your band, yeah, and you set up an operating agreement and you take into all the considerations that we've outlined, and you take that knowledge and you then you read a a, a book or books like the one I was talking about. Right. You are going to be miles ahead of everybody else. And you're going to have an understanding, a real understanding of what you're doing that is going to guide you, potentially depress you, but it's going to guide you forward. And it's better to know the trail that you're heading down uh, and know what twists and turns is going to be rather than just running blindly down it. I like that. I like it a lot. And that's a great segue. Um so, you know, we've covered so much and we have a topic you and I have chatted about it is, is truly a topic in and unto itself, uh, which is the do's and don'ts of obtaining employment for your band. You've got off the charts street credibility um, for this because, you know, we've had you on the show probably, oh my God, four years ago, three years ago, maybe. And I know from chatting with you personally and on the show, you've been in this business since the 80s, right? Yes. Hiring bands, hiring entertainment, negotiating contracts. Yes. And, when and was, yeah, when I was in college, I played in the band. I was a DJ. I was an MC. Okay. And I started hiring entertainment. Entertainment when I was in college, probably about 1986. That was wow. the original, the, the original smoking jackets. So I was obtaining employment for my band. Then I was hiring for that. Uh, for that place, for the for the the, the college uh, bar, right now gone. And then when I got out of college, rather than going the professional route and going to Manhattan and being a good PR professional like all my classmates did, I ended up working for the the uh, late and great Art Stock. And, and, and we have talked about him. He's a legend in New absolutely Jersey. Absolutely a legend. And yep. and it was it was a, a a pleasure and joy of my life to work for him to learn the do's and don'ts of. The business, yeah, and art. Uh, he was just such an innovator and such a great and colorful character. You know, he told everyone I was, that was his son, and very quickly I was hired as the the PR guy to not just work the clubs, but that, but to uh, to be in charge of promoting and doing publicity for his farms, the Jersey Shore Basketball League, the the Birchill Swim Club. Uh, there, there, he had another place in Rochester. He had horse farms in Ocala, Colts Neck, uh, Wall. So I was kind of the guy giving the keys to the castle to promote all these things. And then he very quickly realized that uh, the things that I was able to do instantly for the bars, for the for the Birchill and the playpen, right? Some very big differences. And he said, "You don't forget all that." He said, "You're running these places," and. So here I am at twenty something. I'm booking national acts, um, dealing with, with with all the with the with the major labels, and very quickly I went from, you know, booking myself and hiring college talent uh, at a at a pub in college to dealing with national acts. That's amazing. And yeah, it, it was and it was uh, baptism by fire. I right. did have, I mean, I did have great guidance and a great mentor, and there's a lot of experienced people around me. And, okay. and, it, and it never stopped. I started the uh, the teen, the famous Birchill Teen Nights. I, okay. I started those when people were like, eh, and I was booking national acts every week for the teen nights. Uh, you know, and then moving forward to bar anticipation. Uh, and then I've just helped out so many other rooms and consulted and helped find entertainment. And, I, you know, I also booked the entertainment for the uh, Ocean View and Seaside Heights, which yeah. is a place that I'm also one of the owners of. Uh, you know, that's it's a and let's just pause for a second. Uh, that is a beautiful facility. Is, you know, uh, relatively soon after you opened it up, uh, Scott and I went over there and uh, we're just so impressed with the venue. It, 
And, and the most important piece of it was the people. But holy crap, the, the physical uh, plant itself, as you can see from this overlay here, is gorgeous. But the people, you you have really good people there. Thank you. Thank you. It's yeah. not... It's, it's very difficult these days. I bet and, it is. Yeah. And then from the live entertainment standpoint, the Wicked Wolf in Philadelphia, yeah. that's all D, that's all DJ driven. And that's brand new. We just opened that. Uh, John Sullivan and myself uh, are uh, opened that and, and the Ocean View. My, my partners of our anticipation uh, are not involved with those two places. But okay. uh, the Wicked Wolf is a crazy place in Center City, City Philly. That's all DJs and, uh, and, and MCs and uh, you know, different characters, the Hamburglar, the, the Eagles robot. So a lot of variety of things that, you know, cause I've kind of dabbled in, I shouldn't say dabbled. I've booked everything from aerial wow. artists, to fire eaters, male review, female review, uh, every kind of band imaginable, singles, duos, trios, specialty acts. And it's been a pleasure. And it's really what got me back into playing again was just being that, that all my years as being, uh, you know, being an attorney and and uh, being a bar manager, then owner, uh, what what itched, uh, what yeah. scratch that itch that would scratch that musical itch was being in the middle of it and being part of it and right. uh, and booking it and working with people, and then it just got to a point where I couldn't scratch that itch with involvement anymore, and I had to literally dive back into it and start doing it. So now not only am I booking, I mean, I probably book 500 acts between DJs, MCs, and bands, probably 500 bookings I do a year. Wow. Uh, and, and as well as that doesn't count, you know, bookings wow. for, uh, for the smoking jackets, you know, for, for, for my own band. Uh, that, that's, uh, that's another thing. So I do have that experience from both sides of the kit from the drum kit, as I would say. I like that. I like that expression. So let's let's take a, a little dive in as we hit our last topic of the evening. So what are some of the things from a legal point of view that bands really have to keep their eyes open for, for the do's and don'ts in terms of getting gigs? Well, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know that this is a legal discussion, Dave. Okay. Uh, I, I mean... Because I don't really, quite frankly, I don't think the people out there looking to get their band book care. <laughs> right, right, right. They're going to get, I mean, one of the, uh, I'm trying to think of, a, of an instance that would be absolutely illegal, aside from bringing in uh, band members that are under 18. Okay, right. You know, or, or you know, do, having illegal drugs on stage or, or uh, th things of things of that nature. I don't know what re would really be illegal. These right. do's and don'ts, uh, to be clear, is again. You know, I should have changed the hat on you, and I apologize. Mm -hmm. But really, I'm taking the lawyer hat off, and I'm putting on okay. the buyer hat. I like it. Okay. So, and I've been buying talent longer than I'm a lawyer. So I, yeah. I I've been a lawyer now 26 years. Okay. Wow. Oh my gosh, I've been yeah. a lawyer 26 years, but I've been booking entertainment for a lot longer than that. Okay. So speaking in, you know, and, and not just from my personal experience, but, you know, uh, one of my closest friends is Kyle Brandle and, you know, who books a stone pony and we laugh and chuckle. I've, I've had a, I've been out to dinner a number of times with Tony Pellegrosi and we, you know, we just laugh and chuckle about the stories of things that, that have happened, things, yeah. that happen, things that people do. So really the do's and don'ts stem from, over three decades of being, uh, again, I wish I could have recorded all of these things, these messages that were left, you know, long before email uh, yeah. left. I wish I saved them because they're a classic. But let me let me start out by saying the most important thing. And, okay. and, and let me frame it like this. Okay. This Let's go back to where we were to begin with. This is a business. This is a job. This yes. is getting a gig is a job interview a job right. you so if you take everything that i'm saying and you and you flip it and it's you not as a guitar player or a singer it's you as an accountant it's you as a human resource manager it's you as a painter and you are trying to obtain employment these are the same things that you need that you need to know exactly the same right the first, I, I shouldn't say number one thing because these really aren't 
these really are in order of importance. Okay. It's order of whatever fall, you know, whatever falls into my head right. is do your research. Do your research. It makes me insane the emails that I get from people and the things that they say. And part of doing your research is number one, know your room, know yeah. who you're talking to. All right. Knowing the room means what's the music format of that room? All right. What right. are the promotions and specials that they do? Is there a cover charge? Is there not a cover charge? Uh, and, and, and part of that, it, well, and, and, you know, I'm finishing and we'll, and we'll circle back. Yeah. Who's in charge and who's in charge of what? Who are the right people to talk to? Who are the wrong people to talk to? But what's crazy is that I get, I'll get these emails from these bands in formats that are completely irrelevant something that I would never even consider doing. And it's obvious that these people are just throwing it out there, throwing it out there. And that's all they're doing. It's yeah. mass, mass emails. Right, right, right. Throwing bites. No and one's going to bite when you do it like that. Right. Yeah. We, you know, we do an all original thrash metal. <laughs> and then they send me, you know, three, three paragraphs of the shows they're doing in Hell's Kitchen. I'm like, well, like, 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 wh like, why? Right. Yeah, that, that translates beautifully to the Jersey Shore. Yeah. And, and if you yeah. want, you know, you have to target, you need to target your message. So let, let, let's say it's not, it's not an obscure thing. You, you want, you want to come in and you're, let's say your band is maybe not ex the exact format that the club does. Okay. Right. Yeah. Go in, uh, go in and say, all right at least know something about the room. Say, yeah. Hey, look, I know you, I, I noticed that you guys have a Thursday and your Thursday, it doesn't really seem like you have any real format in mind. Uh, how about this? Uh, I think, I think it would be great. You guys don't charge a cover and you guys do, I see you do the Miller light special for two seventy five. dollars You know, what if, what if we came in and we gave, and we call it a seventies night and, you know, you charge a nominal cover charge, you know, it would cover our, cover our fee. And, and of course you're directing this to the right person. Right. And you're right. saying we have a great web or we have a great social media presence and we're going to bring some people in the door for you. And, and I, and you want, and, and that's, and that's part of it. But so the research, know who you're talking to yeah. and, and know something about the venue. If someone yeah. comes to me and they, and they start talking to me about, about bar anticipation and uh, or emailing me and they're talking about bar anticipation to me and they know what they're talking about, I'm going to keep reading. Right. I'm, I'm going to keep reading. And, and you know, and probably the first thing I should have said is, is, is really the second one here, is be professional. Yes. Being professional means with everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. Personalize the emails, for Christ's sakes. Not yes. your talent buyer, to whom it may concern personalize these things and you know what spelling grammar absolutely syntax it, yes it matters how about I, how about this how about if you cut and paste something make the font match in your email and not make it look like a ransom note well and you know what i see that all the time well obviously this is the part that they changed and, yeah and, and many yeah. of them don't i mean for christ's sakes there's software out there that'll that'll change the names yeah. I mean, a lot of email programs will do that. It, yeah. it, it shows absolutely zero motivation. Yeah. And yeah. you know what? And, and maybe it's me, but when someone says something to me, sends something to me, and there's no periods. Yes. Yeah, no commas or anything. I think less of the person. Yeah, I mean, I you should. You I should. Do. I think it, that they're – I don't want to deal with them. <laughs> yeah, because it, it – it, it most likely doesn't mean they're unintelligent. It means they're too lazy. And that, and that communicates to Tom Janerone that they're going to be a lazy person to deal yeah. with in his venue. Well, right? yeah, and you're 100% right again. Yeah. It's, it's one of two things. You're either so stupid that you don't know any punctuation and right. everybody knows some sort of punctuation. Right. Or you're right. so lazy that you think that your communication to me is so unimportant that you're not going to do it. Right. And I mean, how does that make you feel when they don't give a crap about, you know, that, that that's like dressing like crap to a job interview. It, it's, it's disrespectful to the person you're with. It, it, yeah. You know what? And what I, what I like to say, 
about how important a comma is, when someone said, oh, who cares about that comma? Right. I say, well, you know what? You know why it's important? Because there's a big difference between let's eat, Grandma, and let's eat, <laughs> Grandma. That's right. right? <laughs> so, I was trying to think of one of those. That's a good one. Yeah. You, you tell Grandma how important that comma is. Yeah, it's, it's a matter of life and death. Yeah, and, and you know, and when you're making, yeah. and the other thing too is it, uh, trying to make personal contact with somebody is, is important. Uh, yeah. I'll never, I was at, I was at Birch Hill and back then I was getting literally the mail guy was dropping off crates, milk crates of cassettes. Wow. And, and, and of course, if I got a CD, I was like, Whoa, these guys are like, they're, they're highfalutin. Yeah. But really cases. And I spent, there was no cell phones. And I mean, I had a car phone, but yeah. I spent hours and hours and I did, and I did listen to them. But a lot of people would just blindly send in stuff. And a, a band that I ended up later managing and became great friends with this band called Turnstiles. Okay. On the, Joe Bazone, the lead singer, and Rob Cash, who's now a, he's also an attorney and a restaurant owner. Right. Uh, he owned restaurants in Freehold area, great places, uh, the Metro, and I forget the, the other places. But uh, those guys came, they found, they found out, they did their research. They found out when I'd be at Birch Hill. They found out who I was, and they walked up to me, the two of them, dressed nice. I mean, when I say dressed nice, I don't care how you dress, but you're going to meet someone to make an impression. Don't go there, yeah. you know, looking the way Scott does right now. Although, although you know. They don't <laughs> but uh, <laughs> anyway, and he came up to me and he shook He's my He's mugging hand. it for the camera right now behind the scenes. We're looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget. JB said to me, Joe his own. Yeah. He shook my hand. He looked me in the eye, strong handshake, and said, my name's Joe Bazone, and I'm in the band Turnstiles, and I want to tell you why my band will be perfect to play at, at Birch Hill. And you That's know what, what I did? I say, yeah. I say, come on, let's talk. And that was great. And then, once you, and then once you engage a person in that conversation, it's important. Part of the professionalism aspect is, for Christ's sakes, read a person's body language. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we, we each can do it to different degrees based on the type of, you know, life life we lead and, and yeah. skills that we have. But if you can tell that a person is really not interested, either change your approach or, or give up or, or, or leave it alone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your approach is probably a, a, a good way. And, and then the last thing I'm going to say about uh, being professional is uh, a, a method of communication. What you should do, and this is kind of part of the research uh, goes back to, and I think they all kind of circle back to research, which is why yeah. I put it first. <clears throat> What's the preferred communication for the decision maker, not yes. you? Yeah. I don't care what you want to do. I'm, I want you to communicate with me the way I want it done. I prefer emails because I am on the phone so much that I can't do it anymore. My ears, my voice. And I work a lot of crazy hours. So I'll be reading emails when everyone's asleep uh, yep. and I'm working late. And then if you send me emails with links and things, it gives me the opportunity when I'm reading the email to check out what you're saying. And when I'm you're circle, ready to review it. And I'm going to circle back. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I can't review or examine or, or judge the veracity of anything you're telling me if you're just saying it to me and I haven't had the opportunity opportunity to review anything first. Right. So I think that's important. And if you keep calling me and calling me, you know, I have, I have people to call me and say like, this is your last chance. And they're pissed. They're like, <sighs> Get it. It's your last chance. We're going to go somewhere else. I, and, and it's, and, and it, it baffles me. They don't realize that I can't call everybody back. Right. Possibly when, when things become a certain volume, you can't call back the no's. You 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 just you just can't. You can barely call back the yeses. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and and so let's springboard from that into the the number three uh, number three do. Okay. Sell yourself. Say that again. Sell. Yeah. Yeah. Sell sales. Life is sales. Yes. If you want to go on a date, if you want a job, if you want anything, you have to sell yourself. Yep. Uh, and. And when you're selling yourself, the question is, why you? Why do I want 
your band? Why do I want yeah. your deal? Why do I want your single? What's special or different about you? And, you know, the answer may be, there's nothing special or different about you. The answer may be, I have a solid product and we put a lot of asses in seats. And, and, and here's where, here's where the fight, here's where the fight happens. The fight between the business musicians and the musicians, musicians. You know, I, I've always said, you know, the, uh, when that whole entitled class came around in society, I'm like, yeah. Oh, musicians had that for years. I was dealing with that for years because there's a lot of musicians that yeah. feel entitled. They feel that you are obligated to book them and you can go on any group chat and, and any, uh, any room, any chat room or any strength to fake. And they will just bash talent buyers in rooms. Sometimes it's deserved, but the overall tone is we're not there to bring people. We're artists. Well, that doesn't happen anymore. You yeah. know, you know it, ACDC wouldn't it be ACDC if they played and no one showed up. It's about asses and seats, cover bands, original bands, original bands. You, you don't, you, you're, you better sell records or you're out. Cover band, yeah. better bring people or you're out. Now, look, when you reach a certain level of notoriety and success, you're going to, you're going to be put in better play, better situations to where maybe it's a holiday and the room's already going to have a good head start. So you're, you're going to be entertaining people as well as bringing people. And right. that's where, you know, the good get better and the bad tend to fall off. Yeah. Yeah. But it's so important that you, that you understand that no one's trying to uh, rip anybody off. It, it's a business and everyone's trying to do what makes dollars and, and cents. And, and it's putting food on people's tables. Like that's, you know, what, you know, artists can be artists and artists should be artists, but at the same time, you know, they have to be mindful of the fact that there's people dependent upon them to eat literally. Yeah. No, you you know, absolutely. Like, uh, I mean, you remember Murph and the magic tones, they didn't just get their first gig. They had to work for it. Right. Right. <laughs> it, it's, uh, you know, explain, explain to the talent buyer, why are you a good fit for the room? Right. They, I get that all the time. We're a great fit for bar a. Okay. Don't, don't say you are. Why? What makes you think you're a great fit? Tell me, maybe I'll agree. Maybe I won't agree. But don't just say I'm a good fit for the room. Right. You ex explain explain that because maybe there's something that I don't know. And the other thing too is social media numbers, mailing lists, text lists. They all matter. You know, they definitely definitely matter. And I actually didn't realize how much they mattered until I real we uh, uh, the, uh, we meeting the smoking jackets. We got a number of gigs because I had uh, some talent buyers call me and say, oh, wow, you guys have a really strong Facebook following. You really like, do, by the way. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. But my, my, but my thought process is you, you don't care how the band sounds? And, you know, a lot of times they don't. No. Hey, well, these guys bring people. Yeah. And, 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 <laughs> That's, I mean, that is – it's certainly the name of the game today, right? People, people can make money. And the promises of money uh, with social media numbers works. Now, the, the new thing now is people are like putting influencers or quote unquote influencers in bands. Okay. They're saying, I have, you know, 14 million followers on Instagram or TikTok. Well, yeah, you know what? That's great. But if you take that 14 million and you take out the fake accounts and then you take out the uh, how many people are under 21. Right. Well, geographically make no sense. You take out how many people just don't go out. There's seven left. There's and, seven. Yeah, you know, how many people that are live close enough to go to the venue? How many people actually want to go to the venue? And how many people are available to go somewhere that and night? And spend money once they get there. That 14 million you know, disappears pretty quickly. That's interesting. Not I never knew about that. That's kind of like the uh uh what who are the two the two brothers in the fight game now? Um the oh, Dana White. No, the, the two the two influencers, uh, Jake, uh, uh, Logan, Logan, Logan yeah. Paul, and uh, Jake. Yes. Yeah. You know they 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 did something crazy to the fight game, but that's that's a different world because oh, well, that's that, pay per view. That, that's different because you don't have to leave your house. Yeah. That's yeah. A, that's a I'll call it a consumable. Yeah, you're right. And yeah. You, you, 
you know, the people that that liked, I mean, you're on the computer. The yeah. same vehicle you're using to like that person is the same vehicle you're using to see what that person does to consume their products. Right. Uh, you know, it, it could be a physical product. It could be their entertainment show. Yeah. It's, a, it's the same vehicle. And you know, that person's in, in, in tune with that. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and closely related to that. The next do is have a plan mm -hmm. or selling yourself. How will you promote the gig? Right. Is there something special that night that, right. that you do or you want to do? Uh, you know, show me, don't tell me. Right. Uh, uh, with, with everything. So yeah. if you and, and you know back to the you know back to the whole the whole selling uh, the selling part is you come in with that with that plan. What's your plan? Here, hey Tom, here's what I want to do. Yeah, I, I see you have an opening on a Thursday night, and you know, your your format's typically classic rock, but I have this group. It's a little heavier. It's you know it's lean more leans more towards uh, you know uh, Def Leppard and ACDC and stuff like that. So it's a little heavier, but you know what? Here's what I want to do. I want to turn this into a, a rock night, and I have this group of people and that group of people from Facebook that aren't interested in that kind of music. We do this we do this kind of special with this type of vodka. I've got someone that's going to support it here or there. I mean, I'm, I'm being very, very general here. Yeah. But coming with this, coming with the, 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 let me tell you right now, to me as a talent buyer, the idea can suck. But the fact that the fact that you're coming to me with yes, yeah, my yeah. bad, we're a good fit. You're saying no. Here's what I want to do. Here's how I want to do it. Let's do a theme night. You know, let's do let's do an '80s party, and we'll do an '80s. We'll you know the band will dress in '80s. We'll play all '80s music. We'll give we'll give away Rubik's cubes, and we'll we'll do all we'll do all these things. That's great. Because you know what's great? Even if you don't like their plan you know that you could work with them and say, you know what, I don't like your 80s idea, but maybe we have line dancing if you guys, you know, or what have you. But you know that you could work with them because they're ambitious enough to even have a plan. Because they have an idea. Yeah. They have yeah. an idea at all. They have a yeah. plan. They're yeah. not lazy. And, yeah. then, and then another one of the pet peeves of mine that I actually find funny yeah. is, you know, I always say, show me, don't tell me. Yep, yep. And... When you're marketing, when you're marketing your band to anybody, not just talent buyers, but to your fans, yeah. provide yeah. great visuals, action. Yes. Yes. Don't put a, don't put your your high school yearbook picture up there unless you're yeah. doing it for fun. All right, great action video uh, visuals, yeah. videos and videos with crowds. Yeah, I know. <laughs> see, yeah, you see the empty yeah. room. Yeah, God. I get, I mean, probably two or three a day I get. And, of course, right before summer, it's it's a lot more than that. Yeah. And people, they send me videos. And they'll actually take the time. Like, the, the video will be titled, Killing It at Bob's Ale House. Right. You know, with 13 exclamation marks. And you click on the link. You're like, oh, man, this might be a band I miss. You click on a link. And there's five musicians. They're not on stage. They're not on the stage, which is fine. So it's a small yeah. room. Yeah. So you know, it's a little pub. It's a small. It's like an MJ's or a yeah. small place. And someone's taking a video, and they're leaning against the bar. And there's not one soul within ten feet of the bar. The rest of the bar, there's people, but right in front of the band, there's nobody. And then the best part is when someone pans to right. the crowd, and there is no crowd, and the bartender's leaning against the wall. And, and the band's playing, and the band. Listen, some some of those bands are really good. Right. right. Nobody's there, and you know, all bands have bad gigs, but this is you chose to send that to me. This is your best representation of That's you. That's their billboard. So yeah. all I can assume is this is as good as it gets for you. Right. I know. That's you know this is one of your best songs and this is one of your biggest crowds. Wow. I, and, and it, and it baffles me that first of all, did they actually think it's good? And secondly, they take the time, you know, to, 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 to send that. I know. It, it's crazy. Because they're focused on the fact that I played that lead really well, you know, or the vocals were good. They're not thinking about it as business people. They might have some pride in you know the quality of the musicianship losing sight of the fact that 
while you might care about that as a musician, it's much lower on your priority list as a talent um, purchaser. I can guarantee you this. Yeah. Talent purchasers care about what the people want, right. not the musicians. Right. But right. I guarantee right. you what the musician thinks is important about that recording is the least most important thing yes. to yes. the person that's watching the band playing. Um, yeah. It's like the whole it's like the whole mistake thing. Yeah. No one knows, no one cares. No. So as long as we're dancing and having fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and then you know and, and then for 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 the fifth thing and it's potentially the most important thing. If you're in the business, cover band, original band, build relationships. Surround yourself with people. Fellow musicians, talent buyers, bartenders, servers, the guys at the door. Uh, sound engineers. So, you know, you go to gig, the gig you get, because you know what? The, people aren't static in the business. That that door guy may some may be the, may be the guy that's booking a talent the next time. He could be the owner of the bar the next time. Or someone whose feedback they care about. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Fellow musicians. Yeah. You get in good with other musicians. They Look, musicians are probably my favorite group of people in the world. They, they 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 really yeah, are for good reason and, yeah uh they do care about each other and some of them have a weird way of showing it but right. they legitimately care about each other and they always help each other out uh, i've had so many bands refer the smoking jackets to a place that they play right doesn't help them because it's just it's it's another mouth to feed and there's only x amount of dates and they're ref and they're they're referring because of a relationship that was built between either me or someone else in the band and that person in the band, and then it's reciprocal because yeah. we we referred them. Uh, I I think that's I think that's real important. Or if someone gets sick, yeah. you know, hey, we can't do the gig. You get on the phone to call the next guy. I yeah. I, I could I, I could tell you this, and he, he might even he might even be mad for me saying it, but I don't care. You know, Brian Kirk. Uh, who, who, you know, we all know, Brian Kirk, uh, he's super successful, top of the food chain in New Jersey. He does so many corporates and privates, and he right, can't right. keep up the weddings he does. Brian has a list. And he doesn't even know that I know that I know, I don't know about his list. He has a list that he gives brides uh, and grooms of other bands. And wow, I've that's seen crazy. Lot, and there's And there's probably... I don't know, 10 bands on that list, if I, if memory serves. And it's like these bands all all are are in, I don't know if you call it competition with, with Brian. But, but they're competitors, even if they're not in competition. Yeah, but you know what? But there are people that, are, that would be in line to get that gig before they asked him. And rather than yeah. him just saying, sorry, we're not available, he, he, he refers. And you know what, Liz? That's class. Yeah. That, that's class. And, and you know what? And if you had the relationship with Brian, you'd be on that list. And that list yeah. would end up, you know, turning into, uh, turning into money. And listen, yeah. bar, a, lot of, a lot of talent buyers, sometimes by default, know nothing about talent. It's just a person. It could be the manager that's just hiring somebody. So who do yeah. they listen to? They listen to the bartenders. The people, yeah. the and, and the people they like and the people who show them respect – you know, like all the natural human interactive traits, only one of which is the music. Yeah. And yeah. what's the thing you hear most the band say? Don't forget to take care of your bartenders. That's right. And you know why? Right. And that yeah. and, and think about it. Oh, there's there's bands out there. I guarantee you, 99% of the bands out there that say that don't even know why they say it, other than that they heard someone else say it and it sounded cool. Our whole well, lives listen, we've heard it. Yeah. Yeah, but why are you doing that? You're doing it because the bartenders are typically the most important people in the organization. And the bartenders Absolutely. are going to say to the manager, I love that band. When are we having them back? Yes, exactly. And that's the way they're getting rebooked because they're building a relationship with the bartender through money. Yeah. And you yeah. know, the and the and the acts that the tip the bartenders to, I I see it, I hear it. Oh, these assholes walked out on their tab. I hate that band. They could have been the greatest yeah. band. Yeah, you know, absolutely. They, they yep. stand, great, and they didn't tip the bartender. All of a sudden, they suck. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. The last big do, and the don'ts really yeah. tie into the do's. Right. But when you book, you might be patient, have fun. 
you know, when you go That's out to a place. the most important thing you could say right now. Right. That's beautiful. You know, if you go to a place, like, like, for example, let's say you go to the Wonder Bar. And yeah. you want to go see Debbie Melissa and you want to get you want to get booked. And yeah. first of all, if you did your research, you'd know that she's a family type person. She runs a great organization. She's there. She's on. She's there all the time. Uh, boots right. on the ground kind of person. If you go there and want to talk to her uh, uh, and she she's one of the approachable people and, right. and speak, and she would talk to you. And she says no, an initial no or tells you to get her at a different time or not yet, or whatever, anything but an unequivocal yes, don't just walk yeah. out the door. No, you do. Sit at the bar, order one of their, order one of the great burgers. They do have a right. good burger there. Right. Okay. And okay. your drinks. And then, you know what? Show up another day. Say hello to her. Yeah, you're part her. of the family. Say hello to her. Don't say anything about yeah. your man. Say, yeah. hi, Debbie. Hi, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm Tom Janron from the Smoking Jackets. Just thought I'd say hello. And you sit down, you have a few drinks. You put the you put the bands back in your in her head. Now you're a patron. Yeah. Now the third time you walk up to her, she may she may remember your name. But yeah. now you've built that relationship with her, and you're going to be you're going to be talking to her. The, her level of trust of you is going to be totally different. So really if you really say really. my band my band is really good, she'll believe you. She'll also she, you'll also tell her. You believe in her product. You believe in her club. You mm -hmm. like her place. Yeah. And you can only do that from being patient and having fun. Love it. Love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, that That's the advice. How about the dark stuff? The don't stuff? <laughs> well, let's hear a couple of those. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really dark. It's just stuff that, that really aggravates me. Yeah. And I'm sure it aggravates everybody else. Yeah. The, the, the first don't is don't try to be everything to everyone. Right. Uh, it's hysterical. And I think the record is like 18 formats. Uh, they'll say, we play right. rock, country, soul, blues, Latin. I think one day I counted 18 wow. different, different formats. Uh, or we're all professional musicians. We can play any format. That doesn't help me. No. no because you mean we don't play every format. Yeah. But I can tell you right now, if you play every format, you don't have a following in every format. No. No. And you're not going to fill the seats in every format. You you could yeah. be the greatest musicians of all time, and and you and you may, but it's not going to help me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here's another thing that aggravates me. Don't don't number two. Don't make the purchaser do all the work. Yeah. I get emails that say, uh, I'm 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 looking to book my band, or I'm trying to get down the shore, or yeah. we kill it in New York, and we want to add Jersey to our rotation. Uh, if you're interested, uh, if you're interested, check us out and they leave a link to their webpage and you got to search. You have to navigate the whole thing yourself. Right. Or, or, so now I'm doing all, like no introduction. No, like if you want me to click on a link, tell me what it is. Say, yeah. here's some videos, here's some audio, here's some photos. So yeah. at that point, I know what I'm getting into. It's not right. just, it's not just five unpunctuated words in a link because yes. that's I, i'm i'm probably not going to click that link you know if you you know check us out on facebook you know may, you know leave a link or here's our instagram uh you know leave it you have to make it as easy as possible because yeah. if i have to work for it i'm not going to do it and the right. worst thing i get people saying are you looking for bands this season if you are get back to me and i'll send you our references oh, or i'll oh. send I'll, I swear to God, they'll say, wow. I'll send you, I'll, if you're looking for bands, get back to me and I'll send you a press kit or an, or an EPK or a digital press kit, whatever, right. whatever you know, what, uh, you know, whatever vernacular they're going to use. But people literally will want me to get back to them. And then I have to get back to them for them to send me their information. And you're not going to do it in reality. I mean, could you, uh, could you imagine you go into an interview you know, you're 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 out of accounting school, and you go to some big accounting firm, and you know nothing about the accounting firm, and you go in there, and you know, what are you looking to do for the company? Oh, anything, whatever it is, I can do it. I, I can yeah. uh, go to my website. You know, what are your references? Well, you know what I'll do. Uh, let me get back to you on that. Right. But, no. <laughs> uh, 
And, and you know, to, to say the things I hear it all the time. I don't know where they got. I, I get that with resumes from, I mean, I've yeah. hired thousands and thousands of people yeah. and, and on these resumes, I don't understand the references available upon request. Just give me them now. Give me the references. Yeah. Because I'm not going to go back through 300 applications and ask everyone for the references. Right. If you have good references, wouldn't you want them? Yeah. This is a, I mean, okay, maybe you're trying to keep your resume to one page. I get that. Well, guess what? Have another page that's your references. Yeah. So if I get through your, if I get through your resume, I'll look at your references. To say upon yeah. request, you lost me. Absolutely. Number three. Yeah. Number three. Don't be pushy. Right. Don't be pushy. Um, a lot of times, if you, especially if you uh, catch a, uh, a talent buyer, especially if it's at a show or at night right. when there's work right. going on, that talent buyer has a lot of things going on at once, and he's he or she is probably not blowing you off. They may not have time to talk to you. Um, right. So. Don't be pushy. Look, yeah. persistent, energetic, right. enthusiastic. Those are all great. Those are all great traits. You know yeah. what? I, I see your. I, I would love for one of these days for someone to say, "I see you're busy right now." Yes. Instead of talking to you, when's a better time for me to come back? Or, I'll come back later. I see you're busy, and you know what? Hang out, have a few beers, be patient. Yeah. And you know what? At some point. When is a break of my action? Oh, if you if you approach me professionally, yeah, and 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 you have so you have a plan, right? And you know what I'll do? I'll circle back to you, and I and I'll I'll come up to you at the bar, right? And say, hey man, sorry about that. You know what do you got? Yeah, you know, and and, and I'll and I'll talk to the person, and uh, even if I'm not interested, you know, what? maybe I'll have a drink with the person. Right, Build, building that relationship. It's all and, about relationships. And here, and 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 the next one is is one that, and only, there's only two left, really. I mean, there's probably a million, but for the purposes of this, the one that kind of bugs me is, it's kind of like in life, you know. There's two kinds of people, I think, the kind of people that go out and make things happen and better themselves through actions and doing things. Yes. Then there's the other type of person in life that gets you like by tearing down everyone around them and yes. trying to climb. Mm -hmm. on the bodies of everyone they tear down around them. And I love the former. I hate the latter. Yeah, I a, that negativity I, I run from. It's a and bad I, way to live. It's a bad I've been for doing all it of us. Years, yeah. And it made yeah. my life so much better. And I wish I did it sooner. Yeah. Uh, so don't come to me and trash the other bands. Yeah. Don't come up to me and say how much better you are than the other band. I've had guys that legitimately say to me, you have this band playing at Bar A. Uh, I saw them here two weeks ago. And you know what? They really suck, man. That band's terrible. We blow that band out of the water. So, first of all, you know, what, what don't you know? Well, first of all, it's, it's all subjective anyway. You know, so you may not like the band. But you don't have a relationship between me and me and that person. Right. Uh, they, the only, if they're playing, odds are they're playing because they're doing well. They're doing something right. Doing something right because you yeah. know you know there's only one thing more important than the booking, and that's the rebooking. Yeah. So that that person, you know, could be playing there for years, and and they're a staple. And we all know that the best bands aren't the, the best followed bands uh, very often. It's you know the fun bands is what people like. Yeah. So, so anyone that comes to me trashing the other bands. First of all, no one likes a rat. You know, if yeah. you like, you know, if there's something you know about the band that's not good, oh, this guy's a cokehead or that, you know, and yeah. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to be part of your drama. All you've mm -hmm. done is alienated me with your with your negativity, and you're never building relationships with anybody. Yeah, that's it. And, and I think that the last don't. Uh, there, there's a whole other do's and don'ts once you get the gig that you know yeah. that's another whole show. But uh, right, don't make false promises. In other words, don't lie to get the gig. I mean, look, sell the sizzle, not the steak. Yeah, I get it. That's marketing right. 101. But don't straight up make false promises. If you because if you come to me, you know, a lot of bands they they over promise me and then they quickly realize that I've been doing this too long to be over promised. 
Right. The person come to me and say, hey, look, you know, we want to play on a Thursday. And we're going to do, uh, you know, we're going to we're going to we're going to bring at least 400 people. We have a huge following in summertime. The fun is going to be even bigger because all of our friends go down to shore. And we're so great that our promotions are so strong that, you know, we do 400 people everywhere we go. And you know what? Summertime, bar A, we're probably 500 people. I'm like, oh, okay. And uh, all right, so you'll do you'll do 400 people. All right, well, how much you know, how much you want, how much you want to get paid? Well, we, you know, we want fifteen hundred dollars. In the meantime, I'm like, these guys aren't gonna bring anybody. Right. You know, I look at the videos, 16 people have watched them. They have they have 37 followers on Facebook, and you know, and 32 of them are are, are their direct family. Right. <laughs> they're from way out of the area, and they're, I know they're not gonna do anything. So I'm saying, all right, you know what? So you're going to do at least 400 people? Absolutely. I said, would, it, would you do 400 people if I charge cover? Oh, yeah. In New York, they charge $10. I said, all right, well, how about this? I'll make you a deal. You guys sound so good. I want you to make more than $1,500. Are you willing to make more than $1,500? Absolutely. $1,500, that's our introductory price. That's our first time price in. You know, and Dave, this is, this is a conversation – I've had multiple times and I had it as recently as four days ago. Right. And I said, well, here's what we're going to do then. You're going to play for the door. I'm only going to charge $5 so you can promote it even more. So we'll charge $5 at the door. You figure between the reduction in price, I'll do it. I'll throw a drink special in between the reduction of price down to $5. The fact that it's bar A in summertime, you're going to do at least 500 people. So, I don't want to give you fifteen hundred dollars. I want to give you twenty five hundred dollars, and you're going to take the door. Oh, uh, well, we don't do door deals. Well, why not? You're gonna so you 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 can't do four hundred people. Well, you know, first time in, man. I said, well, would you do at least three hundred people? Oh, three hundred easy. Okay, well then there's your fifteen hundred dollars, and yeah. and and it all comes crumbling down. Yeah, and yeah. now that and now they don't have a friend in you. And all the people you know. Because they're not willing. And, and, and guess what? I've done that deal. Right. I, I, I've done that deal where I say, okay, you don't, you don't believe, if you believe, if you have faith in what you're doing enough and you want to show me, I'll promote, I'll promote my ass off. I, yeah. I want you, I want, I want it to be successful. I'll promote my ass off. If you want to, if you want to take the risk to make extra money, I would never right. cap bad and say, you know, I want you to make sure. Look, I've done a lot of door deals and still do with certain bands and they walk out fat cats way more than I would ever pay them because it wouldn't make sense. Yeah. So yeah. They'll do a show and I give them the opportunity to make extra, that's opportunity to make extra money. But right. making false promises is going to get you anywhere because you know where it got that guy? It got him on my shit list forever. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I'm never going to book his band. No. Uh, it's just not it's just not gonna happen because it's not someone you want to work with either no because they're lying and then yeah. their reputation is ruined yep yeah <laughs> right out of the gate before they even play for you and they won't play for you and and i actually have had some delusional people yeah say, all right we'll play for the door and and then it's terrible and then yeah. they're pissed off right. and, and and like when i do a door deal like that i always make sure as an aside there's yeah. someone from the band collects money at the door rather than someone from the bar because too many times it's been, well, we got a lot more people than that. Yeah. We don't trust you. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. not happening. But I mean, yeah. I, I've had that people and then they, they always had an excuse, uh, you know, as to why it was so slow. I'm like, look, uh, you know what? But it's a missed opportunity for me and for them because I could have had, a band that had a better following in rather than that band. Yeah. And it's a, it, it's a loss all around. Yeah. It, it yeah. doesn't do, it doesn't do anyone. Yeah. Anymore. Yeah. Wow. Well, this was absolutely fantastic. You, you lived up to the hype. <laughs> <laughs> you, you wear so many great hats. I said at the beginning of the show and I'll say it again, you're the most interesting man in the room, except for Scott and I, but <laughs> Way I'm losing hair, I'm gonna be wearing a lot more hats. Oh, you're an amateur compared to me. Look at that. <laughs> I'm the professional hair loss guy.
but thank you so much, Tom. This was wonderful. Yeah, we're going to chunk this up. We have so much great information here. You know, you're a busy lawyer, you're a busy bar owner, you're a busy musician. So we really appreciate that you took the time out to do this really comprehensive show. And this is what we were putting together probably for about five months now uh, with you. So we truly do appreciate it. Now, listen, it's it's my pleasure. And you know what? It's great. It's great when Scott sends you an email and says, OK, we're, we're, we're doing it this day and this time. I'm like, all right. <laughs> You're right. That's right. Well, you do we, it. We have to do it. We he, have to do it. We don't say no to Scott. Scott, listen, Scott had a plan. Yeah. Yep. The, the reputation. And he put he put it in action. And he, 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 did. Nailed, me, he nailed me down and said, we're doing it. He Let's did. It's, it, he studied at the Tom Janeron School. That's right. He He's dancing. <laughs> we were looking at him now. He's dancing in the green room. So, which is in our, in, for our uh, show, it's the gray room. But uh, okay. we do appreciate it, and we don't say no to Scott. So speaking of that, I want to thank Scott Guitar Assist Angle. He works so hard. I, I, you know, for those of you who enjoy our show, and, and the numbers are really growing a lot, it ain't me, it's Scott. He works so hard behind the scenes, in front of the scenes. He's He's been editing nonstop every time my dog barks. He, um, <laughs> he mutes me. And then when it sneaks through, he has to go on the video. So you won't have to hear all the dog barking that Tom and Scott had to listen to tonight because by the time this airs, Scott will have edited it out. Uh, he promotes it. Uh, he helps keep everyone informed. So, we, we, Scott, I appreciate you. Four years in this journey together, and I really do. So it, it's wonderful stuff. Uh, stay tuned for more Guitar Tales. We're going to ask you to do one more thing besides watching us. Please subscribe. It helps us uh, get more listeners, which allows us to bring more great information to you guys. So on YouTube, on Facebook, any other medium, just hit subscribe. It's not that hard. You go like this. See, press Tom could do button. it. It's all you have to do. Press that button. That's right, all you right have to do. Button. Look, Tom could do it. If Tom could do it and I could do it, you can do it. And then, of course, you'll benefit a little bit from it because that gets you notified when we have really cool stuff going on like Tom Janerone. So thanks again, and have a great evening, everyone. Take care. I'm number two. I'm number two. No, I was the second. That's right. I was the second one. The second on Guitar Tales, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching it right now. I'm Big Daddy M with the Amish Outlaws. I got to go back to work. Here we go. Hi, this is Dave Cohen, host of Guitar Tales, and Scott Guitar Mrs. Dangle. So we put together this show every week for you guys, or at least every other week. We want you to do two things for us, which would be good for everyone. If you could subscribe on our YouTube channel, that would be great. And, and share. Please share the videos around with your friends. Let them know Guitar Tales is out there. Uh, it's not just about guitar players. We have a lot to offer. Thank you.